This is the president. Hello, this is the president of the United States. Who is this? Is it you again? Look behind you. This is my private line. How did you get through? They're everywhere. All the time. We see them every day. But you have to look behind you. There is nothing behind me. How did you get this number? The spaceman told me. What spaceman? It doesn't matter. I'm telling you about monsters. Please, you must look behind you. Young lady, there are no monsters in the Oval Office. The loudspeaker spoke up and said, The loudspeaker spoke up and said, The loudspeaker spoke up and said, I'm Clyde Lewis, and this is Ground Zero. The numbers to call tonight, 888-673-3700. That's 888-673-3700. I want a remarkable show we have planned for you tonight. A whole lot of stuff to talk about. A lot of remarkable things happening, and I'm sure a lot of people are curious about what happened after that Illuminati clock countdown to nine, the ninth, and uh, shut down. It's still available online. You can go to that countdown clock. But now there is no mention of nights, no mention of time. It counted down, and it's nothing now. It just sits there, and it does nothing. In fact, on the ninth, there were several posts to my Facebook page asking if anything significant happened on the day the Illuminati clock ran out. And I know there was a lot of hype about the clock, and everyone had an idea that the clock was counting down to some doom and gloom. Well, what gets me is every time when we have something like this go down, people always are quick to say, Nothing happened. Nothing happened, so therefore you're all idiots. No. Nothing happened to you. That's why you posted that on the Internet. Nothing significant happened in your life. Nothing significant happened around your environment. And this is why you post these things on certain blogs and everything all across the Internet, because it didn't affect you. However, the world is a very big place, and there are a lot of things that happen that affect a lot of people. Now, we don't know, many people didn't know, in fact, some of the explanations of the clock, I sit and I look at and I think, a lot of agendas behind the clocks. However, I had consulted with a number of pastors, theologians, Satanists, Illuminatists, you name it, and we came up with the definitive of what this was all about. I had a whole weekend to do it, and I finally am here to give you the explanation, because it was interesting to speculate about what it was counting down to, however... I did point out in my program that one of the symbols on the clock indicated a hermetic secret. It took me hours to figure it out, and after consulting with a number of uh, associates of mine, I finally figured out what to pay attention to and what symbols were the most powerful. And I loaded my Facebook page with these symbols and a lot of explanation. If you go to my Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash ground zero radio, and hit the like button, you'll see the discussions that are just... They're just amazing, the discussions we're having on the website uh, deciding what this clock was about. There are over a 1,000 people who saw the page, and there are many others who probably thought it was much too esoteric to be bothered with, so they didn't want to look into the symbols that struck a chord with me. Now, the most important symbols on that page, and I pointed this out on the show prior to the clock running out, were the owl, the black sun symbol, and the tabula smargadina, hermeticist symbol. Okay. Now, both symbols were indicating that while there will be symbols in the sky as portents to an even greater event coming, whatever that may be, 
the hidden secrets of the earth will open and a fulfillment of some type of revelation will occur and will be left to the interpretation of the shaman or the theologians, pastors, popes, priests, whomever. Therefore, the event that had to be acknowledged on September 9th that it counted down to had to happen both in the sky and perhaps on or in the earth because if you take a look at the tablet that I had focused on that was a symbol, the tablet itself had a Latin challenge which reads, and forgive me if I screw up Latin, visit, visita interiora terre rectificando invenis occultum lapidum. Or, and I looked it all up, in order to discover the hidden meaning, you must visit that or what is coming from inside the earth. There you will find the truth or the, or the stone of the philosophers. Not the philosopher's stone, but the stone of the philosophers, which is that gem, that gold, that little piece of truth. So what is the answer to the countdown? Well, in vitriol is the, the answer. Now, what is in vitriol? Well, it's like I said, it's, it's V-I-T-R-I-O-L. It's that Latin phrase. All things above and below shall show you the truth. It is true, certain, and without falsehood, that whatever is below is like which is above, and which is above is like which is below. This is what I got when I was, when I was looking into the hermetics and the hermeticist laws and thoughts, and it says to accomplish a wonderful work, magic, or miracle, its father is the sun, its mother is the moon, the wind carries it in its womb, and the nurse is the earth. Now, before all this occult word salad has you screaming that it's all hogwash, <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, it is time now to reveal that the heavens and the earth have spoken, and during the time of the countdown, something very peculiar took place, and the earth and the sky were sending a warning to all who will hear. The changes are within both the inhabitants of the earth and the earth and sky itself. This is the warning from the clock. There was a file, and this is where it all gets really bizarre. There was a file where the Illuminati Order info site had the clock. The file was listed as something known as thaumaturgy. Thaumaturgy. You've got to learn this word. Thaumaturgy. Now, I asked a couple of my friends. I asked Tracy. I asked Rex. I had several people that I asked who are all occult-minded. I also asked a few of my friends who are very religious-minded. My guest tonight is going to be also commenting on this. And he's a remarkable human being. I've seen his work on the Internet. He's an amazing theologian and pastor. Uh, Paul Begley, coming up. So you don't want to miss him. He's amazing. Now, thaumaturgy. The word deals with miracle working or being able to do blood magic or earth spells. If you're one of those, if you're a pagan or if you're a, a witch or if you're, I, I have to use the word spell, but it's actually using the power of, whatever that power may be, of earth and sky, if it's the power of God, so be it. But it is a word that literally means working wonders, where wonders will be shown and it will be creating some change in how we see the planet and its relationship with earth. I remember the word thaumaturgy coming from some stuff that I had read once about John Dee, who was the one and only magician for the Queen Elizabeth I, it was in uh, Euclid's Elements, he says, Thaumaturgy as a blood ritual which gives a certain order to make strange things happen or to create signs or miraculous harbingers on earth or in the sky. It can be used to animate objects, raise the dead, unleash discarnate spirits, change the chemical makeup of objects, turn blood to water, and water to blood. Thaumaturgy could also be used to describe the actions of Moses in the biblical account of the Egyptian plagues. Moses and Aaron would throw down their staffs, and they would transform into serpents. And if we read in Exodus chapter 7, verse 20, in order to change Pharaoh's mind, Moses also worked the magical wonder of turning all of the waters of the land of Egypt into blood. Now this is significant. Thaumaturgy, the blood spell, the blood rite, or the idea 
that we need to see changes in the elements, changes in the environment, and they all come from within each and every one of us, and they come from within the earth. As above, so below. The sun, last week, last weekend as a matter of fact, the sun was sending all kinds of filaments and all kinds of CMEs towards the earth. It's been happening, it's been happening a lot, and we've been chronicling these things, and we've been watching them happen. They've been causing all kinds of things, and people are saying, why all the earthquake swarms? Why all the changes in the environment? Why, why is it that in New York, two twisters touch down in New York? Tornadoes in New York. It's because miracles and wonders do not cease during times of changes in the environment, in the solar system, on the planet. And it's not just the planet and the sun itself. It's coming from within the human himself or herself. That is what hermetics is about. That's what that seal was about that was on the website. That's what it was about, the clock. The clock, I will tell you now, and I said on my program, was a causal engine. It was a causal engine of magic getting you to change your mind and to open your eyes to strange wonders and miracles and signs. This is what happened on the ninth. So, to those who said nothing happened, I am going to show you that something is happening. Pastor Paul Begley, the YouTube pastor, and also the theologian who's a remarkable speaker and human being, is going to be on this program to talk about some of the changes and strangeness that have been happening. He wrote a book called Texas Blood Lake, and he's going to talk about why the waters are changing the blood around the world. 888-673-3700. That's 888-673-3700. We'll be back with more. Keep it here on Ground Zero. FM News 101 KXL. Back to Ground Zero with Clyde Lewis on FM News 101. As usual, in the apocalypse, Ground Zero, with Clyde Lewis. Three days prior to the countdown of that clock that we were following last week, there was an anomaly that happened in China that became national news on September 9th, 2012. China's Yangtze River, the third longest in the world, turned red. They said the entire water area there was blood red. State broadcaster CCTV said the Environmental Protection Bureau in Chongqing had ruled out the possibilities of industrial and uh, sewage waste pollution causing the river to turn red. While the waterway turning red is being investigated as part of a sediment uh, brought forward by flooding, the timing of a body of water turning red at the September 9th date or around the September 9th date is actually very compelling. And so that is why I had to bring on the program tonight Paul Begley. Why Paul Begley? Why Pastor Paul Begley? Because he was the YouTube pastor that when people started eating each other in Florida had said that he felt that it was not bath salts that was caused this. It was some demonic plague that had come upon the earth or come upon the area, and it's still with us now. And these may be signals, in his opinion, of the end times. Please welcome to Ground Zero, Pastor Paul Begley. Hey, Pastor, how are you? Oh, I'm doing great, Clyde. Thank you so much. Glad to be on the show. Can you give me an are you serious? <laughs> Absolutely. Are you serious? <laughs> what is going on? Are you serious? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Man, I tell I mean, you, I watch you go crazy. I feel like I should go crazy. It's, 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 it's just amazing what is going on. I mean, now you're seeing... China, water turning to blood. France, water turning to blood. And now i got reports that even in Japan, water is turning to blood, or right. blood red at least. Right. There's been seven accounts of major waterways, lakes, rivers, or seas turning blood red in the last 13 months. The lake in Texas on July 31st, and uh, that's I did a little YouTube video, and I didn't think nobody cared, and the next day... Every major network in the world covered the little YouTube video because they said some preacher in Indiana said this is a sign of the apocalypse. And they made fun of me for a little bit, Clyde, but then they stopped doing that after the Beirut River in Lebanon on February 16th ran blood red for three days. Memphis, a river on February 20th, 
turn red. India, it rained red rain in July 16, 2012 this year. The Sea of Azov turned red in Russia on July 29th this year. The waters and the tourist attractions in France went blood red on August 10th of this year. And now the Yangtze River in China. Are you serious? I know. It, it, look, I tell you what. You know, and I was, I don't know if you're familiar with this Illuminati countdown clock, this strange clock that had all the strange satanic and, and esoteric hermetic symbols on it. But the thing was counting down to the 9th of September. And as all of this was being reported, I mean, these things have been going on for some time, but it finally made the mainstream press on September 9th that all of these waters were turning to blood and blood red and everything else. I was looking at that and I realized that the whole clock, the idea was creating some sort of a causal what they call a causal engine, which is, of course, a, a, an electronic sigil that is being used to get people's minds to change. And the whole hermetic arcanum that was involved was actually saying that as above, so below, which means that whatever happens above us will happen within and that we will start seeing changes in the earth. And I was thinking to myself, not only do we have the blood waters happening now, but I don't know if you're aware, all up and down the West Coast now, including uh, Portland, uh, the other night where I'm at, smelling sulfur coming up out of the earth. Yes. I just, I, as a matter of fact, my uh, phone's been ringing off the hook this afternoon and several emails. And my wife four times has said, Paul, what are you going to tell people about the water stinking? And I said, well, <laughs> there's a scripture in Isaiah if you want me to go there. It's in the 50th chapter. It does say that uh, the land is going to stink. Uh, to your point, though, uh, and I say this a lot of times, um, that whatever is going on in a spiritual realm as it relates to the earth and its relationship with God, I'm talking about the humans on the planet and their relationship with God, whatever is the spiritual atmosphere, it will be manifested in the weather and the physical elements of the planet. This has been going on, and you can check it. For instance, we already know that 75% of the earth is water, and 75% of the human body is water. Mm -hmm. We also know that 3% of the earth's oceans are, are of salt. 3% of your human body is of salt. So we are made of the dust of the ground, so thus we're a reflection of the earth. So to your point about the, the Illuminati clock, and yes, I actually went to that website, looked at it, and stared at it, looked at all the symbols, and said, what? I need somebody else to decipher this. But, <laughs> you know, I felt like some hieroglyphic pastor, you know, lost in some tyranny. Sometimes you got to dabble, pastor. Sometimes I know, I know that you're a man of God, but I'll tell you, you got to, I mean, you got to dabble a bit and find out what those occult symbols mean so I you can do. tell your I flock. I finger in there, I, like I get bit by some bat or something, and I realize <laughs> I'm pulling out the holy water. Yep. But, but in all, re in all reality, there is manifestations of things that go on in the planet, there's storms, tornadoes, cyclones, different prophecies come forth from the scriptures. People also, whatever their atmosphere is, if they're apprehensive, if they're fearful, if they're afraid of certain things, it will manifest in a physical form in our planet, whether it's the air, the water, the land, what have you. Yeah, they call that, in the uh, Tibetan Book of the Dead, they call them tulpas. They're they're actually uh, thought forms that manifest in uh, the physical, and uh, it's actually exactly true. W actually well known that the the Armageddon that we experience in the physical actually began in the spiritual deep inside our core, w deep inside our core. That's where it took place. So if the apocalypse and these apocalyptic signs are showing, it's because it's on the minds. The eschaton is on the minds of those who are out there, and it just seems to me that uh, you know. Pastor Begley and myself have seen this. Pastor Begley, of course, he has a YouTube ministry. He has a ministry, prophecy, you name it. This guy is one of the uh, the top guys. Got him on the program tonight to talk with you about the, the oceans and the waters and the rivers turning blood red. The thaumaturgy, if you will. It's called thaumaturgy. It's the blood rite rituals. Moses did it. Jesus did it. Several, uh, several of the prophets did it. Thaumaturgy was part of this causal engine that was this clock. And I have... Uh, I have the file and everything I'm going to be putting up there where you can go to the link and see that the word thaumaturgy was used, the idea of turning wine into water into wine, wine into blood, blood into water, you name it, that's what it is. 888 673 
That's 888-673-3700. We'll be back with more. Keep it here on Ground Zero. More with Clyde Lewis and Ground Zero on FM News 101. understood that the Yangtze River in China has turned blood red. You can see the city uh, of the square in China, and the water is literally blood red. China's longest river has abruptly turned red. Investigators have yet to determine the cause, but they're considering industrial pollution. And if you're thinking that it might be red tide, the algae that causes red tide is a marine group, not a freshwater group. So it's highly, highly unlikely that that's a red tide related phenomenon. Well, you can go ahead and call me crazy, but China just had an earthquake the same day that the river started to turn red. Actually, it looks like it was three earthquakes, ranging from 4.3 to 5.7. Residents in China's southwestern megacity of Chongqing have been puzzled by this strange sight this week. These images of the Yangtze River, the longest in China, have been surfacing since Wednesday. This stretch of the river around Chongqing looks like it's been dyed blood red. Locals suspect that severe pollution is the cause, but Chongqing's environmental protection has another explanation, sand. Official reports are saying that flooding upstream washed excess sand downstream, turning the river bright red. The Bureau also made a point of saying they did not find any evidence of illegal sewage dumping, but netizens have been questioning the official announcement. Investigations are ongoing. I'm Clyde Lewis. This is Ground Zero. Number to call 888-673-3700. That's 888-673-3700 tonight. Are you serious? Pastor Paul Begley on the program. And we are so glad to have him on the show tonight because he's commenting about why is it the waterways in France and in China and in several other places, Beirut, why are they turning red? Now, Pastor, I know a lot of people are saying, well, it's a natural phenomenon. We've got salt in France. We've got maybe some... Uh, earthquake activity going on, but does it matter? I mean, isn't it just a sign anyway, even if it's a natural occurrence? Exactly, it really is. And in some cases, they'll say, well, it's too, it's, the water's too hot in this area, and, and the other place will say it's too cold, or there's uh, too much sulfur, or there's algae blooms. It really doesn't matter. The, the scriptures tell us in Revelation that in the last days we will see the water turn uh, to blood, or turn like blood, or as blood, or the, or the color red. Matter of fact, there's two verses. Revelation 16:3 says, "And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man, and every living soul died in the sea. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters, and they became blood." So, yes, you said earlier in the program, Moses turned the water into blood. Matter of fact, the magicians that were working for Pharaoh, they could turn a little bit of the water to blood. They just didn't have the stay in power of seven days like Moses. It doesn't matter how it happened. It's the fact that in the last days we were told it's going to happen, and we're obviously seeing it today. I remember in the uh, Ten Commandments, the film, when Yul Brynner says, there was an earthquake or a volcano that caused the waters to turn red. It wasn't your God. And I'm thinking to myself, it doesn't matter if uh, it was a volcano or what have you. It happened. I mean, the water, I mean, it, to me, looking at the pictures that are on the Internet of all this, looking at the it, it troubles me because, you know, my, my mind says, yes, this could be a natural phenomenon. In China, they're saying sewage. In France, they're saying salt brine. In other places, they're saying it could be a red tide of, of algae or whatever. But even seeing blood red water, and a city sitting there with this blood red water, it, it just it gives you a, a kind of a creepy feeling. I mean, it, it gives it you a feeling that, oh, my gosh, something is not right here. Well, especially when you take into account what's been going on since, you know, just before New Year's Eve when 5,000 blackbirds fell out of the sky in B.B. Arkansas. Mm -hmm. They said, well, maybe that was fireworks. So the next year, 
They canceled all fireworks celebrations for BB Arkansas for New Year's Eve. Guess what? 6,000 blackbirds fell out of the sky. What about all the fish that have been dying and all the other problems that we're having in marine life? And, and it's in the Bible. It's Hosea chapter 4, verses 1, 2, and 3. Mm-hmm. The Bible said because there's no truth, there's no mercy, there's no knowledge of God in the land, and because of the swearing, the lying, the killing, the stealing, and committing adultery, God said that the land is going to languish. It's going to waste away. And the people, he had a controversy with us, and he said the beasts of the field, the fowls of heaven, yea, and the fishes of the sea are going to be taken away. And I was, I was uh, you know, interviewed by CNN about this, and they kept saying, Pastor, uh, but isn't this a natural thing? I said, really? How many times have you seen 5,000 birds fall out of the sky? I mean, it's just something I see all the time. No, but we are, since this happened, Clyde, we are seeing, I mean, on a week-to-week basis around the world, phenomenon that people have to step back and look and say, is there something biblical going on here? Well, as a pastor, don't you have a struggle? I mean, come on. I have a struggle all the time because I have a religious background myself. But, you know, I'm the type of guy that, you know, I practiced religion, got real good at it, and retired. You're the guy that does it 24-7. So here I am trying to do a talk show and trying to grab all these anomalous things from the air, trying to grab the occult and the, and the satanic and the godlike and everything and just throwing it all together, one big mishmash of the eschaton. And I'm looking at it going... Am I crazy, or is the eschaton really happening? Would you say right here that you believe, as a pastor, that the eschaton has started and, and that you think that these are all signs that, that point to the end? Yes. Wow. And I don't even have to blink. Wow. Really? You, wouldn't have, you don't blink? You don't even, you don't even no. question your faith at any time during this whole process? No. Wow. Because, and, and here's why. After 28 years of studying the Scripture... When I was a, when I would say, let's say, 16, 17 years old, uh-huh. I would hear Bible scholar preachers, guys like Jack Van Empey, say oh, these things. Love guys, Jack Van Empey. He's, he's right. one of my idols. I, I wish I was a walking Bible like him, but I'm not. Me too. He would say, guys, in the future, there's a day coming. You're going to see all nations surround Israel. Right. You're going to hear of earthquakes in different places. And you'll see, hear of the water turning to blood. I remember hearing him say that 30 years ago. Today... We don't turn on Jack Van Impey and say, what's he going to tell us might happen? Today, we turn on the news and say, what biblical signs are happening now? This is a different world, Clyde. It is. We are, we are on the brink of the beast. We're on the edge of eternity, or as I like to say, this is the apocalyptic hour. Now, I'm not trying to strike fear into people and say, hey, you know, go you know, clean out your bank accounts, build a, t- a bunker and get in and hide somewhere. But what I am saying is you have to seriously stop and reevaluate your life. But where is the silver lining in all this, Pastor? I mean, come on. I mean, you know, I've been hearing doom and gloom preachers for a long time, and, and I sit here and I, and I say to myself, you know, the apocalypse is going to hurt. I mean, it's really going to hurt. It's going to suck. Right. I mean, literally. It's going to suck. It's going right. to hurt. It's not going to feel too good. I don't want to watch my friends burn a stubble with, uh, you know, Christ's uh, x-ray vision, uh, you know, coming down and killing people. I just don't like that idea. Is that what's going to happen, or is there something else no, I'm no, missing? No, 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 no. There's going to be some re- I mean, there's tremend- it's, a, it's a tremendous day when you see the very end come. There will be a tremendous time of celebration and exaltation for those that have come to the knowledge of Christ and have accepted his plan. God did not come to destroy the world. It wasn't his plan from the beginning, but he is going to have to change things due to the fact we have gotten so far from his laws, from his plan he had for us, which was a beautiful plan. I mean... But you've got, to admit, you got to admit, though, come on, you've got to admit to me, don't you get just a little bit scared when you see this stuff? I mean, come on, I do. And when I do, I, I laugh get, nervously. Well, what? Well, I don't get scared because I have... To, Look, if I look at it from a physical standpoint, yes, it's creepy, it's eerie. When I look at that, the pictures of that river, Yangtze, blood red, running through the heart of, uh, of that town there in uh, China, you can't help but think of apocalyptic thoughts. No, that's, the way around. you're exactly right, yes. But if you have confidence in your faith with God, and you have the assurance with Him, you're fully locked in, then you don't have fear of these things. You can't have fear and faith in your heart at the same time. Naturally, we are going to be a little apprehensive. That's, that's natural. But as long as you've made the commitment to Christ, uh, you don't have nothing to fear here, uh, but you have faith 
that his redemptive power will take you on. But I'm still, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I get up every morning. I mean, I do get up every morning and say, are you serious? But, <laughs> I, I, and get a cup of coffee quickly. Okay? You're just like me. Get, get a cup is, of coffee and say, is. Are you serious? I there sit in front of the computer funny. with my Starbucks in hand going, what the hell is going on? Why is this happening? It's what? ground zero. My gosh, dogs are sleeping with cats. It's real Armageddon nonsense going on in the world right now. It's crazy right now. It's really crazy. Bob. Pastor, we'll, we'll, we got to take, we we <laughs> we take a break right now. Okay. Uh, we'll okay. be back with more. Hey, if you have a question... For Pastor Paul Begley, by all means, or if you think that uh, maybe there's a, a logical explanation that we shouldn't be thinking that this is all signs and symbols of the eschaton, the dispensationalist uh, fears that we've had all of our lives. We were taught in Sunday school. Maybe some of you weren't even taught that. Maybe you, maybe you guys think it's all nonsense. I would love to hear the opinions of this, but I know that when I looked at that clock and as it was counting down and I saw thaumaturgy, that word thaumaturgy, and I looked it up, and I saw a miracle, great wonder, turning water to wine, turning water to blood, and blood to water. I realized it's just like Moses and Aaron. It's just like Jesus. It's just like everything I've read in the Bible. That's why I brought on Pastor Paul Begley. We'll be back with more. Keep it here on Ground Zero. This is Ground Zero on FM News 101. Ground Zero. With Clyde Lewis. I just received word that the listeners who are now in the unofficial chat of Ground Zero are binding Satan from the radio to clear the airways for Pastor Begley to bring listeners to Jesus. That, of course, is just sent to me via text. I'm glad to have, I'm glad to have uh, Pastor Begley on the program. <laughs> You got a lot of faithful people out there, Pastor. I'll tell you that. Right well, that's now. good. You know, that's good. And, and uh, we try our best to, you know, you know, I'm not afraid to step out and take a look at what's going on. You know, a lot of the, a lot of the pastors, a lot of theologians, they won't even touch the current world events and the unexplainable. But I think everything is explainable if we would stop and look at who is the creator of all things and just realize he's the greatest mathematician, he's the greatest scientist there ever was. I mean, Einstein was good, but look at his hair. He needed a barber. I mean, <laughs> God has got a plan if we would just look into it. What about Jesus? He needed a bath. <laughs> right? <laughs> did he really? From day to day, he occasionally <laughs> did. I mean, thank God. I mean, they washed you his know. feet, but they didn't wash anything else. Well, it's tough times back then. Where I mean, in the Bible they say they washed anything but Jesus' feet? That's what I want to know. They haven't said anything well, about that. By John. Oh, Here's that's the... true. Baptism counts. That does count. That's Even right. if you need it or not, it counts. That's right. Let's go to Stephanie now, calling in from Oregon. Hi, Stephanie. You're on Ground Zero. Hi. Uh, I had a question for both of you. Do either of you believe in the Bible codes? Pastor, do you believe in the Bible code? Well, it depends on which Bible code. I mean, there's several different Bible codes. I mean, I don't know which one you're referring to. The one that's referring to the end of days uh, being at uh, this December. Oh, December 21st, no. 2012? No. You yeah. don't? That's my birthday. That's your birthday? I'm getting married yeah. on that day. Well, maybe really? maybe you should marry. I mean, I mean I'm going to bring in. Maybe I should just bring you in, too. I mean, we'd invite the whole well, group. We got, we got all these occultists. Wet. I got occultists coming to my wedding. I got Satanists coming to my wedding. I could have you come to my wedding. So we've got a balancing great. act going on. No, I wouldn't. Yeah. I'd, be, I'd be casting every demon in hell out of that place. <laughs> <laughs> that would be hell, wouldn't it? Well, yeah. there'd, be, there'd be a lot of devils running. <laughs> Let me just say this. <laughs> I've had people say to me, you mean to tell me December 30th, or December 21st is your birthday? And it is. Good. And they said, so are you the Antichrist or what? No! <laughs> no! I are you serious? Trick. Are you Mr. Begley the Antichrist? Oh my God, are you kidding me, <laughs> yeah, man? I don't think so. So yeah, I, I don't know if I believe in the Bible codes. However, I will do a show about them eventually if it really gets down to me having to dig into this and find out more about what's going on with these red blood waterways. I don't know what the hell's going on. It's driving me nuts, no, Stephanie. When you get, when you get close, <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I truly believe that we're at the end times, just like the preacher says. <laughs> okay, great, Stephanie. I appreciate it. What were, you say, what were you saying, Pastor? I said you might have to let me in on that just a few days before the 21st. We'll, we'll do a little countdown. It won't be an Illuminati clock, but 
it is going to be crazy what's going to be going on down there in Cancun, Mexico. I mean, I understand there's thousands of people already reserving uh, hotels and, and preparing. I think they're thinking they're going to beam up to Quetzalcoatl or something. Yeah, they, well, they believe there's going to be some type of uh, cosmic energy open, some portals open. Yeah. Uh, it, it's very dangerous. What they don't realize is when they lift these 13 crystal skulls up and these mine elders, they don't really realize what they're doing. They, they are calling up on the spirits of divination, mm-hmm. and they're not, they're not aware of what dangerous things they are opening up. And so I'll be praying uh, that God have mercy on them and that, they, that, 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 that he helped them see the light of Christ. But it is, a, it is a, it's a wild thing. But, no, I don't believe in the code, anything to do with the December 21st. It really has nothing to do in the Bible at all. Right. So I just, uh, right. Okay, let's go down to Eric in Maine. Hi, Eric. You're on Ground Zero. Go ahead. Uh, hello from the chaos. <laughs> go ahead, Eric. Go ahead. <laughs> hey, uh, I got a question for you. Uh, you know, I'm just a normal person and trying to make my way through life, and I'm tired of all the negativity. Is there a way that we can use all this negativity that the Illuminati's using for a positive on our side to turn on them? What do you think about that, Pastor? I mean, you know, the Illuminati's out there doing their handiwork. What kind of work can you do to help us so we don't have to deal with this negativity? <laughs> Well, unfortunately, the Illuminati is playing right into Bible prophecy. You know, uh, the one world government, the new world order, uh, really in the Bible is just called the beast. It is the, it is the ultimate end result of man finally coming together as one. It is the Tower of Babel being completed, if you will, as the one world government. What can we do to counter it? We can stay positive. We can, we can love one another. We can share one another. We can defeat those spirits of negativity with the, the Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. And I would say stay happy every day, smile every day, shine the light with someone else every day, and just uh, walk in that glory, okay? There you go, Eric. Right from Pastor Paul Begley. I appreciate the call. Thank you so much. You know, it's, it's really, and it's true. Eric's got a point. It's really hard. And, you know, and, and, and sometimes, you know, people always say to me that they, I, I really wonder sometimes, I've been seeing, you know, when people talk about my show, they say, well, sometimes Clyde, he, he, he laughs at this stuff. Well, I have to laugh at it sometimes because I'm scared of it. And if I'm not right. laughing. Don't do that. Yeah, well, I, you know, and it's because, you know, it's a weird world we live in right now. I mean, you know, it, regardless, okay, put the Bible aside for one second. If the Bible wasn't there to give us all of this information that told us all this stuff that we were raised with, what would we do? What would we look at this and we'd go, my God, we would be like cavemen wondering what's going on. And yet, right. well, at least we have a blueprint or a template to look at and go, well, you know, didn't it say in, the, in, in this book here or that book there? Or didn't, you know, we have this as a guideline or at least a, it's kind of like a farmer, a, a farmer's almanac for the eschaton, if you will. It, it's something that gives it, point. you know, am I right or wrong? That's a good point. No, you're right. It is sort of like the farmer's almanac of in time because it's prophetic. You know, you, you we couldn't, you can't put a day or an hour on the on the timeline of the end of the world process. No. You can only go by the sign. But when you see dead birds, dead fish, dead cows and water turning red and this and these and wars and rumors of wars, earthquakes and all that, when you see those things happening, you can kind of see where you're at in the farmer's aldermac of God's prophecy. That's right. Hey Paul, I gotta tell you tell you, we got loads of calls that want to talk with you. You're so wonderful. We're gonna hold you over a while, okay? Sure, I'm here all night, whatever. All right, hang on, we'll be right with you. We got Paul Begley with us tonight. So glad to have him on the show. He's pastor, theologian. Glad to have him on the program. He is the YouTube pastor. He's so great. I mean, you go to his website, you see what he has on YouTube. He's an amazing way, amazing way of getting the word out there. Let's just put it that way. Triple eight six seven three thirty seven hundred. That's triple eight six seven three thirty seven hundred. We see a lot of people. We got a lot of calls to get to tonight, and we want to know your thoughts. Of course, we were talking about the countdown clock and what it meant. Thaumaturgy. Remember that word. It's a weird word, thaumaturgy. It is miracle working. It was a causal engine to get people thinking about future apocalyptic events. And yes, it succeeded. We have water turning to blood. The whole West Coast is smelling sulfur. This is magic in the making. It is not something to ignore. And that's what we're talking about right here on Ground Zero. We'll be back. Don't go away. FM News 101 KXL. Hello. 
you are about to experience. Ground Zero. An odd speaker experience. Through the crack. Just when you thought you were safe. The loudspeaker spoke up and said, The loudspeaker spoke up and said, And this is Ground Zero. A quote from my website, the cosmic soup is beginning to boil over. And that is why I listen to Ground Zero. <laughs> well, it's true. It just seems that things are crazy. Crazy enough to try and illustrate uh, the, 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 the remarkable things that happen on this planet. And I don't know. I see... As opposed to my guest tonight, Pastor Power Bigley, I, I have a hard time deciding on whether or not this is all part of the eschaton or it's all part of being more aware of these things because it's happening a lot. What I'm getting at is we were talking about the Illuminati clock and the countdown of the clock, and as I was saying, there was a there's a there's actually a folder on the Illuminati site that uh, had the countdown clock. The file was labeled. Thaumaturgy. It was www.illuminatiorder.info. Actually, slash AC slash Thaumaturgy. And I was reading that, and I know that that goes to the site. It was also seek-jesus.com where you could find that clock. That URL now does not lead to anything. It's parked. But I thought it was interesting that Thaumaturgy is actually a term meaning miracle working. The same types of miracle workings that were done during the time of Christ. I mean, Christ, he practiced thaumaturgy. He was a great miracle worker from turning water into wine. He also fed 5,000 people with five loaves of bread and two fish. He was also able to capture evil discarded spirits, cast them into pigs. Not to mention the ultimate blood sacrifice, of course, which is his atonement recognized by most Christian churches and the resurrection, of course. Then we have Aaron and Moses who used thaumaturgy as well. They were able to cast down their their uh, their staffs and turn them into serpents, and they were able to turn the waters of the Nile to blood to get Pharaoh to, to soften his heart. We're seeing all similar types of miracles or causal anomalies happening now, and some may see it as a sign of the times, while others want to say it's just a normal and logical thing and that we're more aware of these things. Now, there have been many events that my guest tonight, Pastor Paul Begley, has told us about where water has turned blood red. Water's turning to blood. Something that has been talked about, not only in Exodus, but also in the book of Revelations, the book of the Apocalypse, whatever you want to call it. These are some things that we need to pay attention to. I, I remember in February of 2012, the earlier part of the year, the Beirut River turned to blood, and they didn't know why. Now the Yangtze River has turned to blood in China. They don't know why. Situation in France, though, may have something to do with a lot of brine and a lot of other things creating this anomaly of red water or red blood water. But still, even though there's a natural explanation for everything, a logical scientific explanation for everything, does that eliminate that? If it's a scientifically, if we can explain it scientifically, does that eliminate the possibility of it being part of eschatology? The study of end times. Does that eliminate it being part of an end time sign or signal or, or harbinger? Tonight, my guest, Pastor Paul Begley, on the program tonight, we're discussing these very things with him, and he says, without blinking an eye, that these are signs of the end times. One of the things that uh, I remember watching you on YouTube talking about the zombie apocalypse, and I remember I was of the same opinion you were, that this was not bath salts, that this was some demonic plague 
And it seemed that uh, when they did the autopsy on the guy, they had no bath salts in him at all, yet he was eating the faces of uh, eating the face of this guy. And then, of course, uh, prior to this, the CDC had said, prepare for a zombie apocalypse. And now, Department of Homeland Security, just a few days ago, are saying again, prepare for the zombie apocalypse. Now, they may be talking tongue-in-cheek, but what do you think? Do you think that maybe they, they're kind of throwing that metaphor out there, and are we, like with this hermetic uh, causal engine I'm talking about, were we actually projecting this into the, into the zeitgeist, or is this something else? Well, it's a combination. I think they're afraid. It's, this, is thing, this is something they don't know what to do with. It's just beyond medical science ability to comprehend. And so when people get afraid sometimes, they, they will throw up a defense mechanism to say, okay, we're just going to prepare for a zombie att- uh, apocalypse. It looks like this thing might be actually happening. In reality, when Jesus... Uh, Fed the multitude, as you were mentioning earlier, mm-hmm. came across the Sea of Galilee and said, Peace be still and calm the sea. Mm-hmm. When he got off the boat in Kadera, there was a man that was naked, roaming the tombs, that they had superhuman strength. They couldn't hold him down with chains or fetters. And he lived among the dead. Now, I believe, it doesn't say this in the Bible, but I believe the reason he lived among the dead is because in Jesus' day, when people died, they buried him before, you know, if you died one day, you had to be buried before sunset. And they would put him in these tombs. These tombs would have 50 and 60 bodies in them. I believe this guy lived among the dead because he ate on the dead flesh. That he was the original zombie apocalypse. He had a legion of demons. And he didn't like to wear his clothes. He was mad. Now, if you notice these zombie apocalypse attacks going on, they take their clothes off. They eat on people. They have superhuman strength. They've got to be shot five and six times. So, they can, am I right? Yeah, I, I'm thinking we could call this the Gadaran complex, maybe. It's exactly what it is. <laughs> now, now, to be honest with you, with the Homeland Security coming out with this, let's prepare for it. Right. Because they're speaking it, there, there is, I agree with you, there is a manifestation of things. When you speak things into existence, it's in the Bible. It says death and life are in the power of the tongue. It's in Proverbs. It's a biblical law. If you think on it long enough and speak it enough, you will help it manifest. How do you feel about disincarnate spirits attaching themselves to human beings? We've been talking about this. There was actually, uh, we, would talk, we talked about this with uh, Freeman and also uh, Rex Church, who was formerly the Church of Satan, saying that now we are seeing more discarnate spirits attaching themselves to humans, able to put these discarnate spirits into, the, into fetuses unborn and also into the dead. How do you feel about the idea of this idea of these disincarnate entities, perhaps even demonic, attaching themselves to humans and having them do these things? I think it's very, very, very possible. And the reason it is, is because what happens is uh, the Satan is looking for, his demon spirits are looking for living entities to manifest in, okay? Yeah. And so you're seeing more and more and more of that, especially in the occultic practice, uh, there, you know, it's been known for a long time that babies have been bred, uh, women have been bred specifically to have babies to be used for sacrifice. But now it's taken to another level. It's not just to sacrifice innocent children, but it's to r- raise them up with demon possession in them to fulfill the demonic acts of evil and violence upon the earth. Right. Let me give you an example, and nobody please be offended, but... Radical Islam is the greatest trans, trans, uh, transferring of demonic spirits into individuals there is when they're able to convince people to commit suicide bombings and blow up innocent folks in the name of their God. It is the greatest transfer of demonic spirits happening on the planet. So you're saying mind control, the idea of mind control is actually transferring uh, these demonic and disincarnate spirits into yes. terrorists. Mind Mind control and spirit and soul possession go hand in hand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and it can be in any it can be any religious group. There can be Christians, Jews, Muslims, Absolutely. all being all being at, getting these spirits attached to them. White supremacists are the worst in the world for it. They're they're a, a fringe of Christianity, just like radical Islam is a fringe of Islam. It is and and my God, the greatest of all was Adolf Hitler. Yeah. So it's mind control. But soul possession, and it is a 
it is, let me tell you where it first started. In the garden, Satan talked Eve into mind control and soul possession to eat of the fruit. There was always, there. always a reason to try and corrupt the seed of God through the creation and the fallen angels and everything that we've been talking about. We've been talking about this extensively on this program with occultists who all, and you're speaking from a Christian perspective, we've had occultists come on this program from the Christian, Muslim, and Jewish perspectives saying that this is an ongoing conspiracy against humankind from an alien force or an extraterrestrial force that wants to come down and infiltrate the bloodlines of humanity. Well, I'll say this. The alien force that they're talking about, uh, they, may not, they may not agree with me, but uh, the alien force is a demonic force. It is Lucifer and his fallen angels. They are the alien force. Okay. And well, they are. They're, yeah. Well, we'll, we'll explore that more. Uh, Paul Begley's okay. with me tonight, Pastor Paul Begley. We're talking about the waters turning to blood, the countdown of the Illuminati clock, and what it all meant. The countdown of Illum uh, the Illuminati clock was a causal engine to create something called thaumaturgy, which is a great miraculous wonder, which is like turning water into blood, uh, turning blood into water, wine into water, uh, loaves and fishes, all the same miracles you heard about in the Bible. That's what this clock was trying to do, was counting down to recognizing signs of the eschaton. And now water is turning to blood all over the world, all kinds of other craziness, sulfur being smelled all the way down the West Coast right now. People smelling sulfur in California. It's a strange time to be alive. We'll talk more about that coming up on Ground Zero. Don't go away. FM News 101 KXL. More with Clyde Lewis and Ground Zero on FM News 101. Everyone is in on the secrets and big things are being planned. Call Clyde Lewis now. Ground Zero. Zero. Pastor Paul Beckley is my guest tonight on Ground Zero. So had so uh, so happy to have him on the show with us tonight. And uh, we're going to go to a lot of the calls now. So uh, let's uh, strap ourselves in and go to Melissa. She's in Austin, Texas right now. She's listening on 99.7 KXBT. Melissa, hi. You're on with Pastor Paul Begley. Go ahead. Melissa, are you there? Hello? Well, we're having some problems with Melissa, I guess. Are you there, Paul? Yes, I'm okay, here. Okay, I just want to make sure if Melissa was there or not. I don't hear... I don't believe I hear Melissa on the phone, so we're just going to go to another line, okay? We're going to go to All Les right. now. Les, hi, you're on Ground Zero. Hi, thanks for having me. You bet. Go ahead. I would just like to ask Pastor Paul about the time the crucifix was thrown at him by the devil in his office. <laughs> yes, it actually happened. You've seen the video. Uh, the, I was actually doing a video because they, uh, there was a new version of the Bible that had been released, removing God the Father and and Jesus from the Bible, and I was doing a video on it, and I was very frustrated, and I actually uh, challenged the devil. I said, I double dog dare the devil to deal with the Word of God, that the Word of God basically would could not be changed, and the crucifix behind me, which was a four and a half pound crucifix, that was leaning on uh, a cabinet at an eighty five degree angle. Uh, it come off the wall. I mean, if you've seen the video and watch it a hundred times, I've watched it a million times. I, the thing came off the wall, crashed on the floor next to me. Uh, it startled me. I'll be quite honest with you. It 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 startled me big time. I knew it was a, I knew it was the spirit of the devil. I felt his presence. I turned the video off, and I was going to. I put the crucifix back up, got my oil bottle out, anointed my whole house, and prayed, and was going to erase the video and never put it on the air. And the Lord, I felt the Holy Spirit speaking and say, no, don't do that. Put that on the air. People need to know there is, a, there is truly a real evil entity just as much as there's a good entity. Go ahead and pause. Awesome, awesome. And uh, my second question is, is can I have your uh, blessing to uh, ask for Miss Zidi's hand in marriage? Miss Zidi's? Yes. Well, I, I, don't, I don't know if I have the authority to grant you her hand, but... You definitely she's a have, wonderful geez. Christian lady, and if you want to marry her, uh, and if she says yes, God bless both of you. I'll bless that right now. 
Thank you, Pastor Paul. I'm going to get back to the chat and go ahead and make my proposal. <laughs> okay, Les. Take care, buddy. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. I it all and done it all. <laughs> you're the man. Okay, Melissa's back from Austin. Hi, Melissa. You're on Ground Zero with Pastor Paul Begley. Yes, hi. Um, well, my question was about Genesis. Um, you know, like, it doesn't mention anything about the dinosaurs. Like, I know there's fossils that have been, like, found. But um, reading, like, the beginning of it, I know it says God created Earth and, like, everything in Earth, but it doesn't mention the dinosaurs on there. So I don't know, like, that's my question. It's a great question, and here's my first answer would be, when Adam and Eve were put on the planet, we don't know how many years the Earth existed before God ever even made man, actually. And even after he made Adam and Eve, we don't know how many millions of years they may have been in the Garden of Eden before they were deceived by the serpent. And there are plenty so of pre, I, there are plenty of pre-Adamic scrolls out there that talk about time before Adam and Eve too. There is. Yeah. And so what we have is so much evidence of bones and and dinosaurs and fossils that obviously, you know, God has always been and always will be. So uh, it's not a problem for him to have had a massive Earth full of. Uh, T-Rex running around. I'm just glad I wasn't there during that time. Yeah, me too. You know, I've always heard from other people who have told me, and, and it's it is something that uh, I think a lot of Christians are not aware of, that a lot of people who are uh, pastors and people who are theologians actually know that what had happened is the oral tradition happened 6,000 years ago, talking about man's creation, however, right. that it, the Genesis wasn't necessarily creation, but it was actually a rebirth of what was before, because the earth was without form and void, and that meant right. that what, what you're hearing in Genesis is actually the book that talks about the rebirth of the planet because the earth was destroyed and became void, and then it was reborn again. So the whole yes. Genesis book is about being born again, 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 and again. Absolutely. Yeah. Again, it's a manifestation. The earth manifests what is actually going on with us. Yes, pretty much. The yeah. earth is us, yeah. and, when, and, when, and once again, the hermetic seal that was on that site Whatever happens outside happens within. As above, so below. What is going on above us is happening below us. If there's chaos above, there's chaos below. If we're seeing that the earth is spewing forth blood in the waters, it means that something inside the earth is troubled. Something is happening. We could be seeing more volcanic eruptions, earthquakes. We have that whole, like once again, I must have to point this out because I've been getting a lot of emails. Sulfur smells up and down the West Coast right now. California right now is smelling rotten eggs. They don't know what's going on. They're thinking some sort of a methane is rising up from the ground. That could mean that there's been some sort of shift, that there may be earthquakes uh, pending. They even said that what happened to the Yangtze River may have been an earthquake-related type of thing. So, I mean, this is the thing that we need to look at. Earthquakes in diverse places, waters turning to blood, sulfur smells. These are things that are all part of, uh, I guess, the earth going through its uh, birth pangs or whatever they call it. It is birthing pains. It is bringing us closer to the uh, end of the age and to the and the coming of the Messiah. Let me read to you what it says in Isaiah chapter 50, verse 2. It says, Wherefore, when I came, was there no man? When I called, was there none to answer? Is my hand shortened at all that it cannot redeem? Or have I no power to deliver? Behold, at my rebuke, I dry up the sea. I make the rivers a wilderness. Their fish stinketh. Because there's no water and dieth for thirst. Again, he's the master scientist. He is manifesting these things as they are an internal struggle within mankind. And that is why I think you're seeing the apocalyptic signs. That's fascinating, and that's a lot of stuff to think about right now. We're going to take a break, but it's true. There are a lot of things that, uh, I mean, you know, Pastor Paul Begley from the Christian perspective is talking about what a lot of hermeticists have talked about, and that is all things that are coming at us come from within us. If the mindset is based primarily in the eschaton, if we're finding ourselves in this eschaton, this end of the world, this dispensationalist belief system, we will start noticing the manifestations of those very things. Miracles happen because of the marvelous works of the mind. These are some things that we need to explore when we're exploring things at ground zero. We're not saying that supernatural is unexplained. It can be explained. Once it is, the magic is destroyed. However, it's good to learn about it as it is happening. 888-673-3700. That's 888-673-3700. We'll be back. More 
with Clyde Lewis and Ground Zero on FM News 101. Things turning blood red, rivers and streams, lakes, fish dying, birds dying, sulfur smells on the west coast. <laughs> I can't believe I'm reporting this, but it's true. As my guest Paul Bigley would say, are you serious? If you are, 888-673-3700. That's 888-673-3700. This is Ground Zero. Let's go to the phones now. Go to Dean in Louisiana. Hi, Dean. You're on Ground Zero. Hey, gentlemen. How y'all doing this evening? All right. Great. Well, I got you wanted. A lot of people failed to miss in the Bible is when just before Jesus descended into heaven after he went through the crucifixion. A lot of people don't read because it doesn't really leap out at them. Jesus gave us all double what he had. Now, if you have any kind of an imagination. Do you think about being able to have double what Jesus had? That is what kind of power we possess in our tongue. That's if we got our ducks in a row. And when you had to anoint your house, sir, uh, you definitely needed to get into Ephesians 612 area if you did get there. But that's uh, because we definitely go against powers and principalities and spirits in high places. And a lot of people just don't get it. So, Dean, tell me, do you think that what you're saying is end time stuff? Do you think this is that we're coming close to the pinch, which is the apocalypse, and that we're going to have the the whips going to come down, and it's all going to be like one big Johnny Cash song? What do you think? I think that all these folks that really ain't paying no attention and nothing better put on their lead plated chainmail asbestos lined titanium underwear because it's going to get rough. <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> what? Wow! Praise <laughs> Dean! You betcha! Hallelujah! No kidding! Right, Listen to you! <laughs> wow! That's got to be the best thing I've ever heard on this show in my 17 years I've done this program. <laughs> my gosh! My home. Did you say Titanic? Can I? Titanium, titanium underwear. Titanium. Okay, thank you. That's going to be the only thing handling the heat. <laughs> That's about you. <laughs> it's going to get hot, folks. Going to get hotter. Going to get hotter. <laughs> Flames are going to be licking my toenails. Oh, man. Oh, it's just, crazy. Just remember, we don't have to worry about armor on the back because God's got our back. Everything else, we face their front on and hit it right between the eyes with a titanium club. <laughs> Dean, you're the man. Thank you for listening to this program tonight. My pleasure, y'all. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Goodbye. Let's go to Will in Oklahoma. Will, hi, you're hey, on Ground Zero. Thanks for having me. Oh, you bet. Thank you. 
just a few things that are on my mind right now. Um, me, I'm just like seeing all these things personally, and as for the bl- as for the bodies of water turning into blood, I mean, I'm thinking that it might possibly have something to do with the magnetic field. You know, uh-huh. I mean, a lot of animals depend on migration through like the magnetic field, of course, and they What's that up- stuff that's magnetite that's in their brains? It's their their homing beacon, and if the magnets of the uh, of the uh, magnetic field changes on the planet, they go bump it into walls. And they start dying off. Exactly, they start dying off. They lose their way. They start dying off. They can't find their way on where to like return for to their spawning grounds, to right. their mating grounds, right. and therefore they end up washing up on the beaches. Mm-hmm. And or like the sulfur that people are smelling there in California. I mean, it's just I'm possibly thinking that there's a possibility that there might be some major quakes coming for the California area. So if you well, live... Not to mention, Will, I'm going to ask this to Paul, too. Pastor, what do you think of all those strange sounds that have been heard? Are those horns from angels, or do you think that's something else? Uh, actually, yeah, I did a video on that. I, 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 uh, there's In the book of Isaiah, in the 24th chapter, it talks about a pole shift. Ah. So this, is, this is one time where it absolutely says the earth will be flipped upside down. Oops. In the same chapter, it says there will be sounds, songs from heaven heard, and sounds from the pit. And what we've been seeing this past year is all these apocalyptic sounds like trumpets or shofars or, or stringed instruments. People are hearing different sounds. And others are hearing sounds from the earth, like in Wisconsin or in Sweden. Okay which is fulfillment of Isaiah chapter 24. Now, there's a guy in Austin, Texas. He's a country music singer. His name is Sean Fussell. He actually went on YouTube and found all the different sounds that people had recorded, amateur videos, in different parts of the world, and he downloaded them onto one track and played them all at once simultaneously. He sent the track to me. I did a video on it. It still is doing a lot. It's done over 100,000 views. It sounds like an orchestra tuning up. Okay? So I believe that there is a... The sounds in the sky are actually a angelic... The Bible says there will be sounds heard in all four corners of the earth. Right. So, so I believe we're hearing the... Be- it's all part of this apocalyptic time we're in. Whether it's the birds dying or the water turning red, or the sulfur smell. You know what? I've been to the Dead Sea in Israel, and you know you can still smell the sulfur there. Yeah. And that was the, where the Twin Cities of Sodom and Gormiah was. So I, if I was on the California coast, and I was smelling sulfur, I would be doing a double check tonight. Be sure you say your prayers. Check under the bed for demons, right? Well, you, yeah, you... You know, you better you better make <laughs> you better be making sure you're talking to the man upstairs, okay? Yeah. If you're smelling sulfur, where sulfur is, there's been great intense heat somewhere. Oops. Yeah, we don't want that. Okay. We don't want that great intense no, heat anywhere. We don't want that. We don't no. want it. But I'm just throwing it out there for you. So well, I thank you for calling in, and I thank you so much. Absolutely, and God bless. Yeah, they will need that too for sure. Let's uh, yeah. let's quickly go to. Let's say, I think Chris has been on. Chris from Portland. Hi, you're on Ground Zero. Go ahead. Hey, how you doing? Good. Uh, hey, thanks for having me, and I appreciate what you guys are talking about. Uh, no problem. I've, uh, I've I've been listening to the broadcast, and I just watched a video on uh, YouTube last night regarding the, is it thermaturgy or? Yeah, the thermaturgy clock, the alchemy clock, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it was one uh, labeled the Illuminati clock code uh, broken. And the person that did that uh, that video was was pretty intricate. It was a lot of information to to absorb, but uh, it's a lot about what you were talking about tonight. So um, I don't know if I if you guys accept links or email. I, you can go ahead and send me links. I just know that from my experience and from my knowledge, I I didn't look at any of those. I wanted to come to my own conclusions and with the own symbols and signs on that clock. And what I saw was the thaumaturgy. Uh, links and the alchemy links and the hermetic tablet links, which all talk about as above, so below. If we want to know the truth, we have to go inside the earth or go inside ourselves to find it. Something is wrong inside the earth. That is what that clock was trying to tell us. It was telling us 
to pay attention to earth signs and symbols as above, so below. I don't even know if there are any planet alignments associated with this, but I know that if we're looking up and we want to see, there may be a planet alignment or something going on in space that we're unaware of that's causing yeah, this chaos. This uh, particular video uh, covered a, a, just what you spoke about and also was talking about uh, Sirius. Uh, it's the dog star Sirius and these planetary alignments and some dates of, of events that have happened. Pretty interesting, intricate stuff. Uh, the the second question I had, or I guess uh, the first question, that was a comment, but uh, I wanted to know when is the actual end of the age, the date of the end of the age? Is that coming up soon? Where you, okay, Paul, are you, okay, yeah. first of all, um, all right, Chris, are you meaning the, the Mayan calendar? You mean just the end of the age? Well, you know, I, I know it, it's, we're going into a different age, is that correct, as far as, uh, like, age of Aquarius? Um, I mean, are we, is there a date where we enter um, these, these things cycle? These, uh, I say the winter solstice, Paul, what do you say? Well, I, th look, you know, the scripture says there's no, no man knows the day nor the hour, uh, not even the angels, not even the Son of God, only the Father. Now, we can see the signs that we're obviously entering into a, the next age. The end of this age is going to come to an end. But it's going to be an apocalyptic process to get there, and that next age is going to be a glorious age. It's a time where Christ even says he will reign for a thousand years. So there is... Uh, 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 there's a silver lining at the end of this thing if you know Jesus Christ as your Savior. It's very important. I say that very softly, very, very uh, considerately to all people. Do not fear what's coming. If you have Christ, you have nothing to fear. We're in a transitional process. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah, I, uh, I agree with you. Yeah, well, Chris, great questions tonight. Thank you for looking into the clock. Hey, if you find anything else, you can always go to my Facebook page, uh, facebook.com slash ground zero radio. Post some of your findings for me, Chris. I'd appreciate that, will you? Absolutely, we will do. All Thank right, you. we're in this together, so we got to be able to report on the things together, and that's important. Pastor Begley's with us tonight on Ground Zero. Paul Begley, glad to have him on, and we're being very frank and candid about these end times, uh, I guess, signs and wonders, you could call them. The Illuminati clock, of course, on everybody's mind that have been digging that are into these types of subjects. We're trying to give you a little bit of a piece of what it might be, what it may be, but what we see is something called thaumaturgy, which is the practice of miracle works. Same as Jesus, same as Moses, same as Aaron, same as several other prophets of the Bible and maybe other prophets of uh, maybe the Quran and, and uh, other groups. So, you know, 888-673-3700. That's 888-673-3700. Exploring tonight with Pastor Paul Begley. Some amazing things. We'll be back. Keep it here on Ground Zero. FM News 101 KXL. More with Clyde Lewis and Ground Zero on FM News 101. With Clyde Lewis. Pastor Paul Begley is my guest tonight on Ground Zero, the outspoken YouTube pastor on this program to talk about the signs and wonders, the thaumaturgy of it all. We're talking about the Illuminati clock, the countdown, what it all means. And uh, he's aware of it, talking a little bit about it. Why all of a sudden are we seeing these strange things happen with the Earth? It's because that clock was indicating to us that we need to look within the Earth to find the answers and also look into the heavens to see the signs. That is exactly what all of it was about. And that is what we're here to declare, is when that clock ticked off, and it ticked off on the 9th, we began to see stories dealing with earthquakes, rivers and, and, and lakes turning to blood, sulfur smells in California, all along the coast, and there's more things to come, I'm sure, as uh, we approach, uh, you know, uh, September 11th. I know that that's an important date for most people. And, in fact, on that clock, we saw a lot of 11s and a lot of other craziness going on. What do you think is going to happen next, Pastor? I mean, I know that this is like, you know, it's progressing. We went from uh, rivers and streams turning to blood. We had the fish die-offs, the bird die-offs. And now we're seeing, we're seeing, or at least a lot of people in California are experiencing the sulfur smells. Seattle just had a strange sound 
uh, that was uh, going on in uh, West Seattle. Now they're having to leave their homes because of fires. Some people say that they saw things falling out of the sky that caused the fires. I mean, this, it sounded like an alien invasion. Yeah, you know, and what's the, the thing that's coming next is going to be there's, again, if the there's a manifestation, whatever's going on in a spiritual realm will manifest in a physical realm. And uh, we're getting ready for tomorrow. It's almost midnight here, so we're just at 9-11. The, the 25th of September, I, I've been studying what's called the 188-day cycle, earthquake cycle. In my book, Texas Blood Lake, I mention it. And uh, it's happened five consecutive times that on the 188th day, a mega quake of at least 1.0 has happened on that day. Right. Now, I've had people say, well, it's easy to predict that. Where's earthquakes every day? Not 0.0 or greater. There's only been 16 of them this year. So the next one due is September 25th, which is also the Jewish feast day, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. Uh-huh. It's also the day that Israel has drawn a line in the sand that America must deal with Iran's nuclear program. It's also the day that the Secretary General of the United Nations and President Ahmadinejad of Iran and Mohammed Mursi of Egypt are going to have lunch together in New York and have invited President Obama to attend. All these events are due the same day. So, if in the spiritual realm we see manifestations in the physical, then I would say in late September, somewhere between the 24th and the 28th, there I would look for something mag- magnificent to take place, a major earthquake, a uh, this Hurricane Michael that's out there in Atlantic, who nobody knows what it's going to do. It's a Category 3, just about a Category 4. Right. What's that thing going to do? Where is it going? Yeah. Uh, so... You know what I'm saying? What about the tornadoes in New York? That's insane. I know. Uh, that, that, are you serious? It was, one was a tornado, I think, that hit Queens, and the other one was a cyclone that came out of the water for no reason. Uh, and, I know, and then they don't know. They're baffled as to why. They're baffled no. as to why this, why this happened. No. It's, but New York is getting ready for a major storm in a political sense because of the world powers, because of what's going on in the Middle East. And uh, there's, it's a showdown coming up in New York, and you're seeing the air, the atmosphere, the, uh, the manifestations of this. And this is partly why you're seeing the waters turning blood and these different things, because the earth is manifesting uh, very great turmoil that's coming up on the planet. I don't like to say it. I don't want it to happen. I would like to wish it away. But when I look at biblical prophecies and I see what's taking place, you can't run from it. You must uh, embrace it exactly. and be prepared for it. Exactly. Let's go to Brian quickly in El Paso. Wait, 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 hold on one second. No, this is Deanna in Austin. Hi, you're on Ground Zero. Hello, how are you gentlemen this evening? Just a quick question. Go ahead. I have a question for Pastor. Pastor, uh, I know the Lord is my Savior for one thing. But my question okay, for you great. is the Lord created the universe. But is it possible that he could have created multi dimensions and that the earth is maybe shifting up from one and into the other? What do you say to that, Pastor, quickly? Uh, I would say yes. Uh, matter of fact, he's created, he, I believe he's still creating universes. You know, when he said, let there be light, there was light, it never stopped. When he said, let there be light, it is like, it's like this there's light, there's light, there's light, there's light, there's light. It's like when an echo God effect was, throughout the universe. Light. Yes, every biblical law, once it goes into effect, it never ends. And he is creating dimension after dimension after dimension. So yes, to your answer, yes, it is pa- still happening. Pastor, I need to give you one more hour. The, call, the, the calls are overwhelming. They need to speak with you. I'm going to hold you over another hour. Are you okay with that? I can do it. Yes. <laughs> are you serious? I are you serious? It. Yes, we'll do another hour because you're just so popular tonight. Thank you for being on this program. Pastor Begley on the program tonight. Paul Begley's with us. We're talking about the waters that have turned to blood, the countdown clock, the Illuminati clock. It's an amazing topic. A lot of people calling in tonight and a lot of people sharing their experiences with Pastor Begley. And uh, if you would like to participate in the show, 888-673-3700. That's 888-673-3700. It's another exciting strap yourselves in for a white knuckle event hour with Pastor Paul Begley. We'll be back. Keep it here on Ground Zero. 
FM News 101 KXL. Standby. You have five seconds. Five. Information is free. Four. Three. There is two. hope. One. The loudspeaker spoke up and said, We see me. The loudspeaker spoke up and said, We see me. And this is Ground Zero. On September 9, 2012, several posts by Facebook asking if anything significant happened on the day of the Illuminati clock running out. That was Sunday. That was yesterday. I know there's a lot of hype about the clock. We speculated about it a lot here on this show. But one thing I did point out, I will point out again, is that the file that this this whole clock was on was a file called Thaumaturgy. And Thaumaturgy is a word meaning miracle working. And I had said on the program that I believe that it was a causal engine on the internet that was being used to get people to think or move towards a certain goal or agenda. There were a number of seals on the clock, one of which was a uh, hermetic seal. And uh, if you read... What was on, the, if you read about the hermetic seal that was uh, on the clock, you will see that the answer to what happened is called in vitro. It stands for visita inter interiora terre rectificando in vienis occultum lapidum, which means in order to discover the hidden meaning, you must visit what is coming from inside. Now, this is in reference to the earth. There you will find the truth, the stone of the philosophers. Occultum lapidum, the hidden stone, the hidden truth. Visit the interior of the earth, and there you will find the hidden truths, the hidden stone. So the answer to the countdown was in vitriol. All things above and below will show you the truth. It is true, certain, and without falsehood. That whatever is below is like that which is above, and that which is above like that which is below to accomplish the one wonderful work. It's the father, is the sun, it's the mother, is the moon, the wind carries in its womb, and the nurse is the earth. That's from the hermetic seal that I was telling you about that was on the site. The file labeled thaumaturgy, alchemy, all of the things that are hermetic. And when you're dealing with miracle workings, or being able to do blood magic or earth spells. We are looking at the wonder workings now where wonders will be shown, great wonders in the skies and great wonders in the earth. And this is from John D., also several other thaumaturgists, including Moses and Aaron and Jesus. Moses and Aaron would throw down his staff and it would transform into a serpent. In order to change Pharaoh's mind in Exodus, you hear that Moses worked a magical wonder where he turned all the waters of the land of Egypt into blood. Now, if you look around the news, the, the world news, you're seeing that around the world right now, we're watching as strange anomalous activities on the planet are taking place. One of which is several bodies of water in the world are now turning blood red. The Yangtze River is one of them, and there's another one in France where we're seeing this go down as well. This happened earlier in the year in Beirut. Um, the uh, I, I can't pronounce the French word. I think it's Camargue. Camargue in southern France, the water there had a high salt contact, and the saline increased the lakes, uh, turned into eerie blood red. We're also seeing the same thing going on in Japan right now. They've been talking about it. But what's really interesting is the developments on the West Coast as people are beginning to smell sulfur. So what do we think of all this? It sounds apocalyptic. It sounds biblical. And so I called upon Pastor Paul Begley to be on the program because 
He is one of the well-known um, pastors. He has a YouTube channel, and uh, he has uh, managed to use the Internet for his ministry and his prophecy, and he does uh, give prophecy all the time. And uh, we're so glad to have him on the program tonight. Pastor Paul Begley, welcome back to Ground Zero for the third hour. We've held you for three hours because the calls are just crazy. Uh, so glad to be with you, Clyde. It's really it's a fascinating program. And, and during the break, I looked up one verse in the book of Ezekiel that goes right along with what you're saying. Uh, in Ezekiel chapter 32, verse 6, I will also water with thy blood the land wherein thou swimmest even to the mountain, and the rivers shall be full of thee. Now, in rough, what this is saying is, the Lord is speaking through the prophet Ezekiel. I will also water with thy blood the land wherein thou swimmest, even to the mountain, and the rivers shall be full of thee. The manifestation of what's going on in us is being played out apocalyptically on the planet. And just like a woman that goes in travail mm -hmm. to bring birth, we, the earth, the human race, is in the process of the birthing pain of a new era. And it's a new era that will, it's not something to fear, but to something to embrace if you have Christ in your life, of course. So don't be afraid during these times, but seek truth. And I think uh, you'll find the answers are just in front of you. We're going to go some calls because there are there are burning up tonight for you, Pastor, and we're going to go to Michael in Austin, Texas. Michael, hi, you're on Ground Zero Ground Zero tonight. Uh, go ahead. Hello, thanks for taking my call. You bet. Show. So you, earlier you were talking about disconnect figures and uh, and how they're you know this all this negative energy has been focused in on the planet, and right now y'all are talking about the end times and stuff. I don't think we're at the end of the times. I just think we're at a change of of consciousness, and uh, this, uh, you know, we have to counter this negative energy with uh, our inner, inner, inner spiritual energies. We need to manifest it and focus on it. A particular verse in the Bible that I never heard a preacher talk about in church was where Jesus says, "In me." I think your I think your phone's breaking up, Michael. Oh, I'm sorry. How about now? Go ahead quickly. Yeah, he says, uh, these things I do, you shall, you shall do, and even greater things than these shall you do. And when he says shall, that's a direct order to us as individuals. I believe Jesus came down here to show us our human potential. And in John 14, that's what he's saying, that we need, we shall manifest in the likeness of him. So, uh, Michael, I have a question for you. You've been, uh, you, you quote me scripture and everything else, but what do you think is going on with the waters turning to blood and the sulfur smells on the West Coast? What do you think is happening right now? Well, it's uh, it's like the energy. You know, the, uh, there's so much fear that was created by 9/11 in the general public, uh, and that allows this energy to come in because that's what it feeds off is fear. And the Earth is such a natural planet. I mean, it's where we get our food from, the water, and and it's been 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 attacked. I think that we just have to. Uh, I mean, we're definitely in 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 into some changes. Paul, uh, let me ask Paul a question. Michael brought up an excellent point about nine eleven. It's the first time I've ever heard anybody use this outside of how I feel. Do you think that nine eleven, the echoes of nine eleven, are still creating this apocalyptic scare? And quite possibly, when those towers were hit, that was the signal for us to start thinking about these things. Well, I think it plays right into the end time scenario. I, I believe that it was part of the prophecy that, and certainly, it was like a key that unlocked another door, a new dimension. Uh, you know, uh, what happened was it took down all of our protective barriers as Americans, and the world looked at us as being invincible. And when this happened, it said to the whole world, first to the Americans, we're not invincible. And it said to the rest of the world, if America's not invincible, none of us are safe. What's going on in this world? And so it made everybody take three steps back and double-check their, their, themselves, their governments, their philosophies, and, and begin to uh, actually put into motion, I believe, strategic movements militarily around the globe 
as people begin to reposition themselves, uh, because what people do when they feel threatened is they start building defenses and looking for ways to gain advantage and, and leverage. And so, yes, to some degree, there's no question, 9-11 opened a new door, a new uh, fear factor, if you will, a new, a new thought process that, hey, it isn't let's all just hold hands and sing kumbaya. We got a serious problem in this world. It's called hate, and hate is real. Love, hate is just as real as love. Love is more powerful if we can get people to operate in that. Paul, so, um, uh, would I you believe, would you say, or go on the record as saying, or maybe not, that 9-11 was a satanic ritual that was performed in front of everyone on, this, uh, everyone on television, a satanic ritual they burned on the altar of fire 3,000 people and their blood was sealed uh, as a sacrifice to some deity and it wasn't God? Absolutely, 1,000% yes. And that, uh, and I could really break it down for you, but quickly, the, the pool, the, I've been to ground zero. The, remor the memorial is a fountain going down into a black hole. Every fountain I've ever seen in my life is water shooting up. I, for the life of me, I don't understand this square black hole with the water running down. But I do know that uh, in the Islamic world, that of course, Many believe that uh, the 12th Imam was a child that fell into a well and one day will come out. And they also walk counterclockwise around the black stone in Mecca. And when you go to Ground Zero, they make you walk counterclockwise around the black stone of this memorial. I really believe what took place on 9-11 is absolutely that. A sacrifice of innocent blood upon the altar of freedom. And the world and America became vulnerable and so did freedom become vulnerable. Michael, I want to thank you for your call. What a brilliant call. Thank you for calling tonight. Reverend Paul Begley is my guest. Pastor Paul Begley is my guest on Ground Zero. Glad to have him here. If you have any questions, 888-673-3700. That's 888-673-3700. We'll be back with more. Keep it here on Ground Zero. FM News 101 KXL. This is Ground Zero on FM News 101. This is not a test. It is the future. Ground Zero with Clyde Lewis. Pastor Paul Pegley's my guest tonight on Ground Zero. We go now quickly to Matt. Matt, hi, you're on Ground Zero. Go ahead. You're calling from hey. Salt Lake City, Utah. Go ahead. I am. Thank you. I'm an uh, infrequent listener, but uh, frequent enough that I uh, happened to catch the radio broadcast tonight, and I appreciate the conversation. I just had a, a question on the last uh, question post. Uh, was it Pastor Paul, I believe? Yeah, it's Paul Bigley. Um, Go ahead. Um, uh, you made reference to the belief that the attacks of 9-11 were a satanic ritual, and from what I could catch from Pastor Paul's response, that uh, he believed that it was um, a satanic ritual in references to the Islamic faith or the Muslim faith, either directly or indirectly, um, and believing that, whether it's kind of clockwise, uh, not being Muslim or Islamic faith myself, but a believer in, in many faiths, uh, and, and direct paths to God, uh, or whatever salvation you might believe in or lack thereof, uh, if you could clarify if he was believing that the Islamic faith uh, was directed towards the possibility of a satanic ritual, if it wasn't just the acts of extremists of any any faith that might take things way too far, again, the phrase extremists of any faith or religion. Uh, any faith, any religion can take anything too far, absolutely. And when it does and gets, let's see, if it gets outside the biblical principles of the law of God, then it would be of an evil force. Uh, 9-11 was certainly evil. 3,000 people were killed needlessly. We know that radical Islamic jihadists were involved, but I don't think they're the only ones involved. They are part of their one leg of a three-legged stool, let's say, of the Illuminati that will create the beast. 
I actually wrote a book, my last book I just wrote, called Mark of the Beast, R-F-I-D. And in the book, I explain who the beast is. The beast is the one world government or new world order, and it is propped up by two leaders, an antichrist that will actually be a political, economic, and military leader, and he's atheistic. And the other leader will be the false prophet, which will come from radical Islam, which is totally different than what you hear a lot of theologians talk about. They look to Rome. That's fine if they want to. But radical Islam certainly says it is antichrist. And so does communistic, totalitarian dictatorship uh, doctrines or uh, leadership or government ideology. And so in my book, Mark of the Beast, at my website, you can find it. I explain exactly what you're saying. That is, evil doesn't have one label on it. Evil can be anywhere where evil is being done. And I actually believe 9-11 was the sacrifice on the altar, on the fire, the blood of the innocent that has helped birth in this apocalyptic age. So with the intentions is actually the reminiscent facts or the the now retaining or the now standing of of the altar continuing to propagate that uh, Islamic uh, radical thoughts or satanic thoughts of it continuing to be an altar to those of satanic type rituals or the Islamic faith or or do you believe that uh, it's specifically the Islamic faith or any religious faction that has gone outside the realm of said principles or said prophets or false prophets of any religion, whether it be Christianity, uh, Islamic faith. Uh, Are you saying, Matt, that yeah. was it religious yeah. based or not? Is that what you're asking? That, that's really yeah, my I, question. Is, yeah, is, is he, uh, Pastor Paul, are you pinning this on the, uh, and again, no. I'm not uh, Islamic. No, I mean, um, let, me, let me answer. Uh, I know your question. No, I'm not pinning it on just radical Islam. I'm, pan- I'm saying that all evil is, a, is an ugly face that's worn by many religions, if not all religions, at some point or other. Some faction of every religion has wore the ugly mask of evil. And I'm not... Yours and mine and everybody else's. That's exactly right. Okay. All right? Yeah. Hey, thank you, Paul. I appreciate your time. All right, Matt. Thanks all for right. calling. Good call. Thank you. Yes. Uh, 888-673-3700. That's 888-673-3700. We know... That, you know, and that's the thing is that the, the, if you take a look at all the occult overtones that deal with 9-11, the towers, uh, those are symbols, uh, ancient occult symbols, the fool, uh, everything that deals with 9-11, uh, numeral, numerology is also involved with this, uh, fires, yeah. altars, explosions, uh, people seeing demons in the clouds, everything yeah. was thrown in that day. Every, every, every ounce of, of conspiracy to evil to sacrifice to even the cremation of care, the idea that throw all yes. cares away, we threw 3,000 people on the altar of death, and we did so for the sole purpose of necromancy. We charged an American flag full of the dead spirits of those who died there, and we wheel out that flag at every baseball game and football game so that people can feel that, that, uh, that uh, power of that sigil of those 3,000 lives were stuffed out on that day, I think is hideous. I think that at times America is playing with necromancy when they deal with 9-11, and I think that is why we may be seeing this going on. It's because we are, every time we dig up or live in the shadow of those towers, we're digging up a necromantic type of ritual, and it's sad and sick and wrong. Yeah, and that's, that's really what I felt uh, there. When they, the, the, uh, the memorial doesn't feel like a memorial. It feels like a, a, a pit. Yeah. It feels like a, it, I, I'm, I'm serious. I've never, this is not how you build a memorial. I've never seen anything like this. And it's, and I really believe 9-11 was just that. It was a combination of every evil faction, uh, coming together for one device, for one purpose. And that was the destruction of the faith of mankind. Yes, exactly. But the opposite, but the opposite effect is taking place. And that is, the righteous are rising up with the understanding that they're not going to succumb to the evil spirits of the world. Paul, we have to take a break. And, uh, we have to take okay. a break. We're right in the middle of the break. We're going to take that break. We'll be right back with more. Uh, having Paul Begley on the show, remarkable. Give us a call, 888-673-3700. That's 888-673-3700. We'll be back.
Clyde Lewis and Ground Zero on FM News 101. coast near the oceans. Earthquake swarms are being reported all over China and other parts of the world. The sun is acting crazy. Rivers, streams, lakes all turning to blood. There was a clock on the internet, a tomaturgy clock. It was counting down the time for when we would notice these signs. Pastor Paul Begley is my guest tonight on Ground Zero. He's taking your questions at 888-673-3700. That's triple eight six seven three thirty seven hundred. As we try to piece together what may be going on out there, let's go to David in Chicago. He's on XM Radio. You're on Ground Zero. Go ahead. Hello, uh, Islam is being smeared tonight. Um, what very inaccurate information is being spread. On okay, what? now, now first of all, in the Quran. Okay, stop. Okay. Islam is being smeared tonight. How? Uh, okay, I'll tell you. The pastor said Muslims are anti-Christ. Okay. The Quran clearly says that in the end times, Jesus will return to the earth to guide people to, to heaven. All right? Not many people know that, but it's true. The Islamic holy text, the Hadith, clearly says that Jesus is the only pure prophet who is untouched by Satan. The only one. So it esteems Jesus with high regard, okay? On top of this, if we want to point fingers at someone, a religious group or what have you, let's talk about the Bible, Revelation, the book of Revelation, chapter 9, verse 11, 9 11. That talks about the demon Abaddon, the destroyer. Abaddon means destroyer. What's that a sacred word of? I believe, according to the Internet, Freemasonry. Okay? So if we want to point fingers, let's explore some other things rather than just attacking Islam without basis. Pastor, what do you say to that? Well, I, I, uh, I, I understand frustration. I think you misunderstood me, though. I never attacked Islam. Uh, I spoke of radical Islam, which is totally different. Radical Islam is sort of like uh, when you talk about white supremacy among Christianity. It's a far left-wing fringe of Islam. Um, so if, if that was the thought process that came from me or the interpretation, I don't want him to feel that way. 
Uh, I do realize that the Quran speaks of Christ, Jesus Christ, as being a prophet, and I don't want to get into that complete theological discussion because obviously Christianity, we see him as the Son of God. So it, it is a difference. But to his point, the, the, and my point is, evil has wears the mask on every religion. So you, I'm not pointing out a religion specifically. I'm pointing out an evil. And when I talked about what happened at 9-11, it was not all just radical Islam. Radical Islam participates in the New World Order, but it's just a participant. So is the Illuminati, that what's involved in the New World Order, which involves the governments of many nations, the global elitists, the Bohemian Grove groups, and the Luciferians that are involved in all walks of life. So when you talk about pure religion, of course, it must come through only through the grace of God and the love of God for our fellow man. So, Dave, does that uh, answer your that, question? I hope that I hope it not, helps. Not so much, because you would really need to provide proof to the audience that radical Islam is antichrist. Well, the radical, the well, look, if radical Islam is taking, if, if radical Islam is attacking and killing, that's anti-Christian. That's anti-life. Anything anti-life has got to be considered wicked. Am I am I right, David, or not? If it's no, radical, not according to Muslims, and, if, and if radical Christianity is killing abortion doctors and everything else, is that is that considered uh, a good thing? No, it's evil. Uh, I see. What well, I see what you're saying. All right. Well, first of all, well. I mean, to say any person who kills is anti-Christ, uh, all right, then people of all religions could be anti-Christ. Well, it's an okay, let's, just, let's, let's eliminate Christ out of it completely. Anti-life, anti-God, anti-virtue, uh, all that stuff. Anything that's going to bring down life, anything that's going to bring down choice and liberty, anything that is against that, in my opinion, is, is wicked. I mean, let's get right. good and evil out of there. It's wickedness. It's dastardly. It's it's vampiric. It, it's it's. I mean, we can get even more revenant and demonic. There we of go. Course, of course, the sad fact is that people actually some people some people actually believe that radical Muslims carried out 9/11, the biggest fairy tale. Well, we know they we, we know they, they participated. In yeah, and there were other groups who were involved too, David. And right. We know that too. I think I think that Pastor say. Bagley. I think he. I think he's more aware of it, like you are, David. That we know, we know, and you know, that that was all a front. We know that there were groups, Muslim, Jew, any group at all that was involved in 9/11. It, it goes farther than that. It, it's, it's, it's a sick and twisted thing. If we were to dig any deeper, we'd find ourselves feeling really bad because we'd realize that evil exists in every faction of the so-called spiritual realms that are supposed to be leading us. Instead, they're dragging us into this depth of hell that Paul was trying to describe when he went to the memorial. Well, Clyde, we're somewhat on the same page then. I mean, if we can agree that, that let's not single out Islam as having bad people. I mean, we're, fully, people. we're fully in agreement, David. I, fully. And yeah. I, think, I think Pastor Bagley is too. I th I, Bagley, I think, I think he is in full agreement with you as well. Yeah. I was not singling out radical Islam, no. I, it participated. It participates. But it's not the only group. There's no question it's not the only group. And yeah. other groups are involved. There's no question. There's a lot. Okay, fair enough. But there's a lot of evidence that shows that Muslims had nothing to do with it. I mean, you want to talk no, about... you're wrong. Fabricated no, you're absolutely wrong. That you're there is. Wrong. You're, you're trying to eliminate radical Islam from 9-11 completely, and that's, an absolute, that's absolutely cr incorrect. Anyway, I want to talk about why the water's turning blood red. This is why it is. This conversation is why the water's turning red. It's because not a negative our, conversation. This is, it is. Because the, when the reason the water's turning red is because mankind can't, cannot embrace each other. We've come I to think, the point. Oh, I, but Paul, I, I think you're right in that regard. But I think what David's trying to do, and I can feel David. David, you're trying to find common ground in this conversation. And I'm glad you are, and I'm glad that you're asking questions, and I'm glad this is what we're doing on this program. And But I don't agree, too, that I think Radical Islam did have a little bit in, involved with it. I, I agree with, with Pastor in that. I think that, you know, whichever it was, however it was, they were used to, to be, uh, I guess you could say, emissaries for whatever it is was being planned in the back rooms. 
and they were they were almost like the patsies falling for the for the real diabolical planners. And David, if you were to read a lot of what I write, you know who who I think is behind it all. Fair enough, Clyde. Clyde let me make this point though. Do you know that the day after nine eleven, September twelfth, the New York Times and other media reported that according to federal authorities, the hijackers were followers of Osama bin Laden. Now, that's the fastest investigation I've heard of in my life. You're right. right? You're right. In in less than one day, they found out that bin Laden was behind it. Yeah, you know what? When bin Laden Laden was listed on the FBI, we had the show before, David. Bin Laden wasn't even listed on the FBI as wanted for 9-11. You know that, right? I do. Yep. Yeah, David, you're the man. Hey, thank you for opening our minds up to a lot of different ideas in this conversation. You're the man, okay? You're welcome. Take care, buddy. Bye-bye. We'll be back with more. Keep it here with uh, Pastor Begley on the program. We're so glad to have him on here, too. Talking about the waters turning to blood and all this other stuff. There's some crazy things happening in the world. We'll be back. Keep it here on Ground Zero. FM News 101 KXL. More with Clyde Lewis and Ground Zero on FM News 101. a test. It is the future. Ground Zero with Clyde Lewis. Pastor Paul Begley is my guest tonight on Ground Zero. We go now to, I believe it's uh, Landed, Landed in Ohio. You're on Ground Zero with Pastor Paul Begley. Go ahead. Um, hello, Pastor Paul. Um, I had a question. So obviously people are stirring up a lot of fear based on, you know, the Whatever it is is obviously reacting to people getting worked up, and it obviously also ties into the the Mayan uh, theory. Um, you had talked earlier how you know Jesus was the only actual pure prophet that was not touched by sin. Um, I don't know. What do you what do you think about um? You know, the hype that's being built up with the end of days theory and um I don't know, do you think it's meant to happen, it's meant to be fulfilled at this moment? Or if it's just coincidence or I mean do you get what I'm do you get what I'm driving at? Are you talking about the are you talking in reference to the Mayan calendar coming to an end or are you Well yeah, that and um you know, obviously biblical prophecy of the waters turning red and Right uh, would it coincide in any way? Oh, we are coming to the end of the age. Uh, if, if, when you look at it from a biblical prophecy standpoint, the apocalyptic time is coming. Now, we don't know the day or the hour. It says that in Matthew twenty four thirty six and in Mark thirteen thirty two, We know that we don't know the day or the hour, but we can see the signs approaching. Jesus was asked this question. He was on the Mount of Olives in Matthew 24, and they ask him, can you tell us the signs of thy coming and the end of the world, specifically? And Jesus said, uh, many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many will wax cold. He said, you'll hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. The end is not yet, for nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines, pestilence, earthquakes, diverse places. And he could have went on and said, water turning blood red, cows falling over dead in Wisconsin, the smell of sulfur on the coast of California, cyclones hitting New York City, fish wash up on the banks of Galveston, Texas. I mean, he could have went on and on and on. Basically, what he was saying to us is we would be seeing the days we're seeing now. And so these signs have got us all talking about the end of the age because we can sense it. We all feel it, and we know we must be getting close. Yep. Um, people that's about... the end of the world. The good news is, and that's funny I say it's not the end of the world, but, uh, but actually what I'm saying is this isn't the end. This doesn't have to be... The, it's not a crash. We're not going to be a train wreck. What's going to happen? The earth is going to go into apocalyptic disaster mode, but human spirit can live on through the grace of God if we will embrace faith over fear. And that faith has to be or needs to be in Jesus Christ. 
Leonid, I thank you for your call. Take care. I appreciate the call. Let's go now to uh, Brian. Brian calling from El Paso, Texas. You're on Ground Zero. Hey, I didn't think I was going to get on. Go ahead, Brian. You're on. All right. Awesome. Uh, just a lot of talk about YouTube and, uh, you know, all the religion and everything. I was wondering if you guys have heard of the documentary Zeitgeist. Yep, I've heard of it. And uh, what your thoughts are on that? Because when I watched that documentary, it really made me question religion and, and a lot of other things that were going on that it, it talked about in that documentary. Religion's meant to be questioned, so what of it? I was just kind of uh, curious what your thoughts and the pastor's thoughts were about Zeitgeist and their point of view on that stuff. My thoughts are uh, religion should always be questioned, and you should always be thinking and questioning religion. That's my opinion, and that's what I do on my program. Paul, what do you think? Yeah. I agree. I'm questioned every day. I mean, seriously, every day. Are you serious? Every yeah. day. And <laughs> emails, I mean, they come to me in comments, YouTube, uh, what have it. And it's okay. Because if what I believe, if I can't stand on this and back it up with the Word and with the Spirit of God's love and grace, then I don't have anything. And so it's okay to question it. It's all right. And in question it, you will find the truth. Question that's, everything. That's my, is I, that's my problem. I feel like, you know, the, the truth isn't religion. I, you know, I think that religion has kind of destroyed a lot of things that we try to do in this world. Amen. And, and, and along with politics. It has. You're right. You're right. That's why I don't preach. Matter of fact, I'm a non-denomina- non-denominational preacher because religion is horrible. Salvation's awesome. And, and that's the problem. Religion has muddied the water for people to find a true salvation or relationship with Christ. Hey, Brian. I'm on your side on this one. Yeah. Brian, Zeitgeist probably destroyed your faith in religion, but did it destroy your faith in spirituality? No, it did not. I mean, when, you know, whenever I find whenever I find myself in trouble, I always find myself praying to God. That's <laughs> you know, the way it should not be, buddy. Not Jesus Christ, but God. And, and all my yep. family, I have my dad's side; they're Baptist. My stepmother's side; they're Mormon. Mm. And you know, I see the I see their you know their, their sides of the stories, but you know, it just I don't know. It just whatever it just makes me whatever it brings and, you I, peace, man. Whatever brings you peace, that's the way I see it. And uh, yeah, Brian, I mean, we're at a time now where we're knowing that organized religion is becoming corrupt and it's time to take spirituality and extend it to everyone and realize that it's just a matter of treating each other with respect, love, and kindness and tolerance. And it just seems that it's just going away and we're having a lot of people who are corrupt and power hungry and and they're also uh, making uh, religious viewpoints by expedience and not by, by the pure love of God or the pure love of self and spirit. And I think that Amen. that's why I was very, uh, when I heard that Paul had an opportunity to come on this program, I was looking forward to it because I have listened to Paul talk. And I, and, I know, and I know he's non-denominational, and I think it's great that he's non-denominational. And you know, some, Clyde, I love the way you just said that. I'm amen in you over here because... It's, it is about respecting one another. It is about understanding people come from different backgrounds. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's all about showing love and sharing love one with another. Because if you don't love your brother, whom you can see, then how can you say you love God you've never seen? Right. And so it's critically important. And I, and I hate religion. I love the relationship with God with our fellow man. That's awesome. right. Paul, you're the kind of, kind of guy that I've always talked about where I say, when was the last time you told God a joke? He's heard it before, I know, but he'll laugh because he loves you. That's for sure. Hey, Brian, thank you for your call, buddy. And, Paul, you are the man, and I'm going to have you back on again whenever I have troubles with some of these signs and wonders. And maybe if we do love each other and have a good time talking about it, they'll all dry up. We won't have to worry about this apocalyptic nonsense anymore. That'd be great. I'd love to come on your show again. Let me know when. Hey, I love you, buddy. You keep it up, and uh, we'll talk to you soon, okay? All right. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye-bye. Reverend Paul Blake, Begley, uh, Pastor Paul Begley, he, go to his uh, YouTube channel and listen up. He's, he's a great guy, and we loved having him on this program. He's still talking about that countdown clock, and we will talk more about it. got some other things I want to tell you about, including a rain of blood that happened that I did an investigation with, and it was really weird what the results were on this rain of blood that came down. And it's an amazing story, along with the blood-red rivers, lakes, and streams, and the sulfur smells on the West Coast. It's a weird time to be around, but a good time. We're listening to Ground Zero.
FM News 101 KXL. Hello. You are about to experience Ground Zero, an on speaker experience. Just when you thought you were safe. The loudspeaker spoke up and said, The loudspeaker spoke up and said, The loudspeaker spoke up and said, I'm Clyde Lewis, and this is Ground Zero. Tonight's show has been quite interesting, especially when we've been talking with uh, Pastor Paul Begley about what is going on in the world. And as I had pointed out earlier in the program, with the countdown clock and everything we've been talking about, the Illuminati clock, when it ran out on the night, I was very much into the symbology that struck me as the most important thing to watch as you're trying to assess what is going on. We have talked about hidden secrets on this program before. Many of my guests are trying to acquaint you with these hidden secrets beyond the realms of what you're taught normally in religion, which you're normally taught in science. All of these things were there long before establishments of religion in the scientific community. To be educated in the secret schooling, if you will, is something that has been kept secret not necessarily secret, it's just a matter of figuring it out on your own if you can. And the show has opened up the doors and opened up your eyes to this sort of thing. And as I looked at the Illuminati countdown clock, I, had, I, I, I just figured that what it was indicating is that while we are all speculating about what may be coming. The best thing to do is to look towards the sun, look towards the stars, the planets, and the sky for importance to an even greater event. Because we all know that the hidden secrets of the earth will open and the fulfillment of all revelation will occur and will be left to the interpretation of those who are witnessing it. I can't believe how many times I did searches on the Internet for people's opinions of the countdown clock and reading many times people saying nothing happened. And this is what annoys me about people who throw out prophecy. Nothing happened. So why did we even make a big deal out of it, right? Nothing happened. The truth is something did happen, happen and something always is happening. And if it doesn't affect you directly you can always stand back and say it never happened. But my question to those skeptics is, what are you expecting? Are you expecting an extinction-level event? Is that what you're expecting? When people say that something's going to happen, is that what you're expecting when you speculate about something happening? Do you think it's going to be an extinction-level event? Do you think it's going to be something, or do you think it's life-changing? There are a lot of life-changing things that happen every day to people in all walks of life. The paranormal and the occult affects us whether you like it or not. And whether you have Jesus or you have other, other, other religious uh, icons in your life does not matter because the paranormal is constant, it's present, and it's there to influence you, to move you into areas where your core beliefs guide you. And this is where you need to wise up and realize that this is what is going on. And you can't find yourself in such a rigid activity, a rigid mindset, where you cannot open up your mind to the possibilities and allow them to demonstrate for you the wonders of the universe.
it says that one must look within. One must look within to find the stone of the philosophers. One must look within to find that puzzle piece that is missing. It is you that is able to figure it out if you just take the time, if you shut down and decide that none of it applies to you. Then you will not be awake enough or aware enough to understand what is happening and how it all simultaneously is going down. You may have an interest in politics. You may have an interest in religion. You may have an interest of something, sports even. You may lose yourself in sports, movies, television. You may lose yourself in all of those things. But everything that's on television, everything that's in sports, everything religious and everything political has a undertone of some paranormal activity. Something supernatural, magical. We are magical beings and we have magical brains that create the most wondrous things and the most profane things at the same time. So the answer to the countdown clock is in vitriol. All things above and below shall show you the truth. It is true, certain, and without falsehood that whatever is below is like that which is above. And that which is above is like that which is below. In order for you to accomplish the one wonderful work in your life, you have to understand that things happen for a reason. And you can plan. And you can scheme and you can pray. But all of these things boil down to Hermetic Arcanum, which states the father is the sun, the mother is the moon, the wind carries it in its womb, and its nurse is the earth. Think about what that means. And think about all the things that we have talked about in this program and where it goes and where it leads. The arrival of the moon child, the arrival of those who think beyond what is in front of you. Some people can't see beyond their feet. And some people don't realize that it has all been done. That all things have been done now, and all things have been set into motion, and that simultaneously we're seeing the apocalypse unravel. Now, the apocalypse is nothing really all that special. It's just the idea that everything that we do not know, or that we didn't know before, is unraveling and demonstrating itself, showing itself and putting light on those things, enlightening you. The lights have been focused on what is real. And we see the strange as being real and tangible. It's not sudden. It's not new. The signs of the ages are not new. Miracles are working. And that is what I wanted to talk about when I was talking about the thaumaturgy. It is the idea of miracle work. Thaumaturgy is a blood ritual which gives certain order to make strange things happen or to create signs or miraculous harbingers on earth or in the sky. It can be used to animate objects, raise the dead, unleash discarnate spirits, disincarnate spirits, and change the chemical makeup of objects, turn blood into water, water to blood. Moses did it, Aaron did it, Jesus did it, they all did it. You can do it. It's been done. Miracles happen. I was indeed fascinated by what I was talking about with, with Paul Begley, and that is the rivers and streams all around the world turning to blood. That's what thaumaturgy is all about, right? It's the idea of turning things and changing them alchemically. Water into wine. Wine into blood, blood into wine. There's transubstantiation. There's all those other big words that they throw out there. But thaumaturgy, thaumaturgy is something that was listed on that clock. 
And so I believe that I've come close to the idea of decoding and breaking it and giving you the demonstrations. If you look around, you can look it up on the Internet. You can go to my Facebook page and see the commentary that has been left by all the other listeners of this program. We have a lot of listeners out there that are actually paying attention to what's going on in the world. They're excited to be a part of what this is all about. It's not about the end times. It's about watching these times unfold and how wonderful and miraculous it is to be alive now and knowing that we're living through this roller coaster ride. If you want to be on the merry-go-round that goes in circles, fine. If you want to be on the roller coaster ride where you get sick and you get thrilled all at the same time, then this is where you are. And this is what we're experiencing. And it's so wonderful to be a part of it right now. I am so happy that I'm able to see these things transpire in my lifetime. I'm thrilled and I'm scared. I have all kinds of emotions wrapped into them, and that's why I can be so passionate about what I talk about on this show. And like I say before, I am not talking about what I believe. I talk about what I see. And it's not what I I want to believe either. It's what I see, and it's amazing what I see. If you go to my website at www.groundzeromedia.org, there's a new article that's on the site called Blood Count. The trauma, the, the, the thaumaturgy of the countdown clock, which I detail and show you pictures of the waters of China turning to blood and the waters in France turning to blood. And I show the clock and the symbolism that I want to demonstrate for you is the symbolism that got me these answers. And you know, there are people who write me and tell me that when they read what I write, they explore for themselves. They find that it's far more interesting than television to sit in front of the computer and explore and read about things they never heard of before. It helps them better understand what they're seeing on television when they watch television shows or in movies. Because a lot of what is written, a lot of what is shown and demonstrated in science fiction and horror and shows beyond the Snookies and the Paris Hiltons and the Big Brother and real world MTV and all this other nonsensical non-thinking crap you see on television. There are other shows like Ancient Aliens and several others where it's thinking that you need to do when you watch them. You know and you learn about these ancient practices and, and about, these, about this ancient knowledge, which I think is very important because those who know will be the ones who will survive if we ever come to that point where we are on that precipice We're actually seeing the jagged rocks below us, and we're teetering back and forth. Our lives will depend on it. Preparation is the key, and hopefully you're prepared mentally, physically, and spiritually for what is coming. Tonight on Ground Zero, I want to ask you this. Sulfur smells on the West Coast. Some people even say that they smelled them here in Oregon. Sulfur smells, water turning to blood, die-offs of fish and birds. Do you think that this is the end times? Are these signs and wonders part of that? Or are we creating them with our own minds and our own fears? Are we more aware of them? Or is it just something that is an anomaly that will go away and will be forgotten? 888-673-3700. That's 888-673-3700. I need your thoughts on this because I'm curious myself as to what's really going on. 888-673-3700. That's 888-673-3700. I'm Clyde Lewis, and you're listening to Ground Zero. FM News 101 KXL. You're listening to Ground Zero with Clyde Lewis on FM News 101. Everyone is in on the secrets and big things are being planned. Call Clyde Lewis now. Ground Zero. (laughs) I just got an email. 
This is the most ridiculous and unintellectual program I've heard in a long, in a long, okay. Evidently, the preacher does not understand the book of Revelation. Every generation said it's the end times, but it was not even written for the future generations. And my question to you, Creasy, or whatever your name is, does that make you an intellectual elitist? Because that, if that's the case, then why don't you call my show and set me straight so I know where to go and, and everything else if I'm not, if it's an intellectually stupid program. And that's the thing, is that people want to talk about this because it's on their minds right now. And that's important, in my opinion. Let's go to Michael. Michael, oh, hi. Call me you. It's me, Michael. Yeah, I go. Can, I can set it straight. Okay, go ahead. Clyde? Yes. Oh, I'm on, finally. <laughs> yeah, you're on. Go All ahead. Right. Yeah. It was a long wait. Okay. So what about Revelation is it that that you're uh, concerned about? Nothing about Revelation I'm concerned about. Why? Well, uh, well, I just want to uh, well, go back. Well, okay, let's backtrack. Um, everything that Paul said, you know, I'm looking at my Bible. And, you know, he's quoting Isaiah. Yeah. I'm looking at my I'm like, I got it circled. I got it underlined. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. I will also water the land with the flow of your blood. Even to the mountains and the river beds will be full of you. That's one quote. Um, yeah. Any quote from Paul. Um, and I'm like, wow. I mean, this this is amazing. So, um, so Michael, uh, do you think that we're living in end times or this is what we're seeing? What I think is uh, not even heavily... Have we stepped upon the threshold? I think we've stepped beyond the threshold. And uh, we're absolutely living in the end times, uh, Clyde. Okay. And first of all, I want to thank you, Clyde, for the show, for your, for your perspective, for your voice, Clyde. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. And... Uh, you know, there's no voice like it. And uh, I want to go back, you know, maybe a week to uh, a program about Mormonism. Yeah, Mormonism. What about it? And, uh, well, <laughs> I'm new. I'm new to you. I, I want to say one thing about accolades to your, to your sound, to the sounds that introduce your program. Mm -hmm. I've never heard anything like it. <laughs> it, is the most, it is the most magnificent sound I've ever heard. <laughs> Ground zero. I mean, I'm, I'm not kidding. It really is. Well, thank you, Michael. But I want to go back to that show, to that program that was about Mormonism. And I'm not, I'm not against Mormonism. I'm you know, I'm not coming out against it. I just want to, you know, it's a, it, you know, it's a topic, right? Like yeah. everything else. Yeah, and, and it's uh, and it's on everybody's minds because of Mitt Romney. That's why I talked about it. I thought it was interesting you know, to bring it up. Hey, it's coming up. You know, here we have a. Have you heard of the White Horse prophecy? Oh yes, Michael. We talked about the White Horse prophecy in detail. You bet. We all know about that. We all know what it all means too. And Michael, yeah, that's new to me. I had never heard it. Well, did you look it up? Did you did you did you look it up and and try to figure it out for yourself what's going on here? Um, you know, I never heard of it. I just heard of it. Well, Michael, I'll tell you what. Go to my website or at least type in Clyde Lewis White Horse Prophecy. You'll read some of my articles on it. They're out there, and maybe okay. uh, you can call in. We can talk about that sometime. I gotta go. We got another break coming up. But thank you so much for the kind words about the show. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Triple eight six seven three thirty seven hundred. Yes, I know we're new in some markets, but we're here. And we're happy you're out there. And we want to share with you some of the feelings that are going on right now. I'm I'm curious. 888-673-3700. That's 888-673-3700. We'll be back with more of your calls coming up on Ground Zero. FM News 101 KXL. More with Clyde Lewis and Ground Zero on FM News 101.
the nightmare's over. The ordinary, chattering, noisy mind is offline. That's when you can access these areas of higher knowledge. Today, neuroscientists have tools like magnetic resonance imaging. And your boundaries are thin. Then let them observe the brain at work. What Ernst Hartman, the great nightmare researcher, called thin boundaries. A bucket of blood. Zero. The numbers to call tonight, 888-673-3700. Tonight we talk about sulfur smells on the West Coast, earthquakes in divers' places, blood in the water. My gosh, you think you're talking about the apocalypse, wouldn't we? <laughs> it's business as usual in the apocalypse, and business is good. That's why we go to David now, calling from San Antonio, Texas. Hi, David, you're on Ground Zero. Hey, nice to talk to you, sir. I just recently discovered your program, and that gentleman earlier who claims that this has been happening over and over, that every generation just says this is the time. Well, they didn't have the digital technology that we do to do holograms and cell phones and pass signals through the air and surveillance cameras on every intersection, which, by the way, I noticed those cameras going up. Within weeks of 9-11 here in San Antonio, Texas, those cameras were already going up. So my opinion uh, is that those cameras were ready for just some excuse to roll out. But back mm -hmm. to your sulfur, um, I haven't experienced it myself, but I do have a best friend who's climbed every mountain in the Cascade chain, uh, Mount Adams, Mount Baker, uh, Mount St. Helens, Mount Hood. He's told me over the last few years that the only mountain you can climb where you do not smell sulfur is Mount Adams. Every other mountain he claims you can smell sul sulfur, and he's not, you know, he's not a... Habitual liar, I, I believe him, is, is there's sulfur smell in every one of those now active volcanoes. Also, a phenomenon took place over Sela, Washington, about three and a half years ago that nobody talked about. And I've talked to several people that, that, that were aware of it and that were there. Um, during the middle of the night, at about 3 o'clock in the morning one night, the sky became so illuminated that people were getting up out of their beds. Chickens were, were, were going off. Birds were tweeting. Everybody was, was getting up thinking there had been a malfunction in their alarm clocks because it was so bright outside for approximately 30 to 40 seconds that people and creatures and everything were waking up, and it wasn't in newspapers, it wasn't in any newscasts that I can find. So something is going on up, up in that area. Now, now I'm hearing on your program that they're smelling sulfur. I just recently came back from Los Angeles uh, County. I wasn't near the beach, and I did not experience sense, that sensation back in June when I was out there. Mm -hmm. um, however, I will also tell you, you're talking about the spiritual side of things. Um, I was in the music industry almost three years, and I can tell you for a fact that in that industry, it is not an uncommon thing for paranormal activity to take place on a regular basis. Um, I saw it myself. It wasn't considered unusual. In fact, it was an invited uh, phenomenon in that business simply because of the way it affected uh, different recordings and things, and, and you've heard the rumors of witches and things being involved in that industry. Yeah. Although I, I did not participate in that, I'm aware of such uh, such things taking place in that industry. So 
I'm very excited about well finding your show. It's like uh, it's like Alex Jones and George Norrie crashed into each other, <laughs> and uh, I, I can have this conversation. Um, a few things uh, on 9/11. I was having a dream that night that I was in an amusement park and a roller coaster was on fire. The phone rang. My mom woke me up to say, "You better turn on the TV. Something's going on." I was having a strange dream that I've never had, never had sense of a, of a roller coaster at, at night on fire and people jumping off the roller coaster. Since that night, I have seen orbs. I, I have some, and, and I'm going to ask you to pray for me. I was going to speak to your uh, pastor uh, that was on earlier. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure why I've got such heightened anxiety. Something is going to happen. Um, I'm having, and friends of mine are having unusual experiences, uh, not voices, but ideas. I remember when Hale Bop came by, I woke up in the middle of the night with a cold sweat, and, and uh, something told me to look out the window. I looked out the window and saw Hale Bop Comet. I mean, these aren't imagined things, and I know a lot of people whose consciousness are being uh, are being altered in a certain certain aspect. So something is going on. Uh, I'm not going to claim to know what it is, uh, but David, I'm, even I, on my own accord, I'm experiencing phenomenon increasing over the last few years. I also noticed you want to talk about the Colburn Bible. Is there anything in particular you want to talk I, about? I just wondered what you heard about that i heard a couple of your callers mention the destroyer and and the and the blood you know turn the water's turning red and whatnot right. and i was just interested to see if anybody else had heard about that book i know glenn kimball had tried really hard to get that book out right before he passed away well i know about the colburn bible and i know what it says about blood and uh, blood in the water and i know it i mean the colburn bible is terrifying when you read it because it was written actually allegedly by the celtics uh and a lot of the secrets are there, and it's kind of a interpretive way looking at the Earth uh, directly and, and, and some of the end times things happening to the planet. But they're all based primarily on, and what I, what I remember about uh, some of the passages I've read in the Colburn Bible, they're based primarily on things that do happen on the planet, such as, uh, for example, blood, which means when you see the red, the red clay in the waters, uh, that means that something of destruction or cataclysmic is about to happen. The idea that volcanoes erupt, they, they mentions mountains opening up, belching forth fire and ashes. Um, just the idea that the engulfment is what they call it happens, and we see changes in the volcanic. You were talking about the Mount Adams, Mount St. Helens, Mount. Talk about all the mountains here, the volcanic mountains here in the Northwest, and uh, that's what. Primarily, I remember about the Colburn Bible, and I've, and I've read from it, is that a lot of this has to do with volcanic activity. And, yeah. then, and then perhaps what's going on with the red blood in the waters is something to do with volcanic basalt, uh, dispersion, uh, sulfur smells. Maybe there's a volcano or at least some sort of a, I guess you could say, a, a, a geomagnetic thing happening on the West Coast. That could mean that maybe swarms of earthquakes could be happening within the next few days. I mean, we, we need to keep our ear to the ground, but... Um, I really do appreciate your call, David, and what you're telling us tonight. Yes, and it's, uh, it's an honor to be on your show. I will continue to listen to your show. It's, it's a fascinating uh, program. Thank you so much, David. Thanks for calling from San Antonio tonight. Uh, let's see. We have some time here. Let's go to Rick calling from Battleground. Rick, hi. You're on Ground Zero. Hey, thanks for taking my call, Clyde. I really enjoy your show. Uh, you know, When we're talking about the red blood and flowing down the river, you know, if you ask any fisherman in the southern part of the United States uh, when to harvest shellfish, they tell you not to harvest shellfish uh, within the months without R's in it, meaning June, July, August. Mm -hmm. There's a reason for that, because during those months is when the bacterial uh, and uh, allergy flourishes causing red tide. Could you know? Could somebody tell me why hasn't the Red Crescent or the International Red Cross been dispatched out there to these places where blood is allegedly running down the river to check the blood type and maybe get a batch to Syria? What they well, what they've been doing is uh, they've been looking at it environmentally. Uh, they're wondering if the situation in the Yangtze River is nothing more than environmental pollution. France has been uh, looking at it from a standpoint of brine that has died. Uh, we're looking at uh, salt deposits. In fact, the pictures are on my website if you want to look at them. Um, we're looking at brine deposits. Uh, what happened in Beirut is still an anomaly. Uh, there was something that happened uh, that I wanted to talk about earlier about a rain of blood where they did tests and found that real blood cells were found in the rain. Yeah. 
Um, and this is some very interesting things happening in the world right now. Absolutely. You know, I was listening to your show when you covered the, uh, uh, what's his name, Father uh, Harold Camping yes. <laughs> uh, deal uh, yes. during uh, May of last year. Uh-huh. And he was talking about zombies walking the streets. I just ran into a couple of meth heads down the street there after I grabbed a beer from the store, and they would qualify <laughs> as zombies in my case there. I fully agree. Talking about? I don't know. I fully agree with you. I, I Believe me, Rick, I, I tell you, when I see... The meth heads walking down the street and the way they act and the way they tweak, you know, the tweakers. Jesus, really? I know. Seriously, it's just they are the walking dead. And I'm thinking, you know what? Harold Camping was so right. These heroin <laughs> and meth addicts are just like walking zombies. Their fangs are all sucking and they're like, give me your change. <laughs> no, gee. I agree with you, Rick. I, and I've always said that, you know, and I was actually, I remember one time I was at one of my favorite places having coffee and a guy came in, he obviously was tweaking. He was sitting there, and he was shaking, and then all of a sudden, blood started trickling out of his nose. And I felt like this is something out of a horror film. It looked, I was waiting for him. I was waiting for his eyes to bulge out of his skull, and I was waiting for him to eat my flesh. I, had, I felt like fleeing. It was horrible. It was that or either out of the Book of Revelations. I don't know. It, ah, uh, well, I always remember the guy that ate the face of the guy in Florida was carrying a Bible, and he was high on pot. I do <laughs> So I mean, and, and we're not we're not thinking the cannabis started this. I mean, you know, because when you're high, you have no intentions of eating a face unless you're really desperate. Unless his face looked like a big Cheetos bag, I don't think you're going to be eating the face of some homeless guy. So something was definitely happening to this guy, and it, it definitely had something to do with demonic or other darker forces that I just cannot put my finger on. But Rick, I'm glad you're aware, and yes, I agree with you. When I see those guys walking down the street, I, I think they look like The Walking Dead. It's really creepy. Thanks for your show. I appreciate it. Hey, thank you for calling in, buddy. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's some very strange stuff, and uh, it certainly is. It certainly is. Let's go to, okay, let's go to line one. Let's go to Rock. Rock, hi, you're on Ground Zero. Hi, Clyde. Thanks for taking my call. Long <laughs> show. We listen to it all the time. But uh, I was just um, going to say it, it, it blows me away about how conceited we as Americans or Christians uh, we are, you know, we believe that. Uh, our, the religion is right. That's the only one that's right. You know, I know that um, over in, in the mid, or, uh, you know, in Iraq and Iran, they believe that their religion is right. You know, and then the other thing is us as humans are so conceited, we believe that we have such an effect on the world that, you know, we're going to kill it within the next five years if we don't do a change. You know, I mean, I think... You know, I mean, it, it will heal itself, or, you know, the earth will heal itself. They, uh, um, uh, basically, I, I just think that we're conceited, and I don't understand why we believe that, oh, our Bible's right and everybody else's is wrong, and why do we follow that? Well, a lot of people feel that, and, and this, is, this is something that's called manifest destiny, and a lot of people feel that God is on our side no matter what we do. And I have to disagree with that. I don't think God is on the side of any government or any political faction that decides that virtue is not worthy of protecting. God is not on the side of a country that decides to walk into any country and murder and kill for the sake of resource and for the sake of greed. And I don't think God pays attention to any country who decides that they want to be corrupt in their business dealings and saddling the burden of debt on the future and on children who have not who have not deserved this type of treatment, I think God will turn away from that kind of thing. And I don't care how Christian you are, if you go along with it, you're just as sick and wrong as any diabolical demon that lives in the, in the underbelly of this planet. I agree. Just in, any, just in any, uh, any other thing that happens, you know, I mean, if you're there and you're, you're willing to go along with it, you're an accomplice. Yep. You know, I don't understand why we, as humans, don't respect each other as humans, uh, this country is founded on, uh, you know, I mean, Christianity, but it was for the simple fact of freedom of religion. Why do we not let uh, everybody practice their own religion? Not, uh, I mean, I love to argue, but bickering and arguing, that to me is fun. But, you know, I mean, uh, let them believe what they believe. Why are you trying to force your beliefs on them? You know, you guys can have a discussion. If it doesn't work out, you're not going to change your mind, you know, but... That does not mean yours is right and theirs is wrong. It right. just means that they have different morals and different, you know, and that's the good thing about religion. You know, it teaches morals. Well, rigidity doesn't help anything, and so if we're rigid, we're not going to accomplish anything. We have to be open to other people's beliefs and thoughts, 
and allow for faith to take hold because, believe me, hardening of faith is what we need now. We don't need romanticized faith. We need hardened faith, especially in times where we're seeing the, the waters turn to blood and we're seeing and, and experiencing sulfur smells and strange activities in Washington and fires everywhere. We need right. to look out for each other and have the love and tolerance that will keep us together in times where we have to pull together rather than to separate and polarize. I think America has been spoiled too long in order to allow the polarization to happen, to allow the, oh, I'm not going to eat meat type of people or whatever going on in the world. You know what? When you're surviving, you don't care. You survive. When you're helping people, you don't sit there and wonder if they're gay or straight or Democrat or Republican. You help them because they're human beings. They bleed and they hurt and they scream out in pain just like everyone else and by damn we need to stop the screaming stop the crying and start helping and i appreciate rock your phone call thank you very much you have a good evening thank you triple eight six seven three thirty seven hundred that's triple eight six seven three thirty seven hundred a lot to talk about on ground zero and we'll be back FM News 101 KXL. This is Ground Zero with Clyde Lewis on FM News 101. Ground Zero with Clyde Lewis. I know that sometimes the occult world can have you going, what? Are you kidding me? Come on, Clyde. There's other things the world talk about. No, the occult world is the thing that moves us. Our belief systems, our core belief systems move us. Our myths move us. Any, any of our mythologies that we, that we may not believe in now but have read about move us. All the stories that have been programmed into us move us. They move us in directions we wouldn't normally go. That includes Bible. That includes fairy tales. That includes mythologies. It includes the day you found out Santa Claus wasn't real. It's all there. It's all part of the experience. It's all part of what is known as the occult and paranormal. And yeah, it may not be now because it's been revealed to you, but later on, there are so many things that can be revealed to you and shown that, you know, you did not know. Miracles happen. These things happen all the time. And yet, many people don't take the time to watch them. They take them for granted because we're so used to hearing they're normal. But at one time, they were paranormal. And once we find out how it all works, we tend to ignore them. But everything's so intricate and infinite and remarkable. Sometimes we need to see the world with the eyes of a child. And when we look into the eyes of the child, we can see why. Many of us have decided that now we're older, we don't care much about what children think about or what children do, but children are the future. And so when we saddle things like debt, and our legacy is going to be a planet that's going to be ravaged for resources. You have to wonder just what is evil in the world. That to me is evil. Anything that robs the virtue of the children, what the future is. What legacy are we putting out there? We're seeing these end times things happening around us. We wonder if there is a future. But you know what? You should plan as if there will be one. Why? Because there's a promise. Promise is always the restoration of things that are out there. I remember when I went to Mount St. Helens, I was in that area near the Ape Caves. I looked around me. It was out there near Cougar. I was looking around me and I was noticing how beautiful and pristine the land was. Then I remember talking with my beautiful fiance about how she lived in that area during the time of the volcano and how it erupted and destroyed all the land in that area. Now you can see the promise has been given. Things will be restored in due time, and things will be pristine and beautiful, not to worry. Be still, and know that I am God. Interesting. We'll be back. FM News 101 KXL. I mean, some of the scenes you will witness may appear to border on fantasy. 
Stand by. You have five seconds. Five. Information is free. Four. Three. There is two. Hope. One. The loudspeaker spoke up and said, The loudspeaker spoke up and said, The loudspeaker spoke up and said, Give up! Give up! Give up! I'm Clyde Lewis, and this is Ground Zero. Tonight, the show has taken every twist and turn imaginable. And it's all because of the idea that out there, there are things that cause thought, dreams, nightmares. And when I talked about this clock, this counting down clock, I had a number of people on my website on the 9th to tell me, well, nothing's happened, Clyde, or what, what can you tell me happened? Well, I'm giving you details on what happened. What happened is our minds were open to the possibilities of anything that could go down that would be considered eschatology or dispensationalist or <laughs> what I call thaumaturgy. Thaumaturgy, miracle worker, miracle working. Thaumaturgy, used to describe the actions of Moses and, and Aaron, Jesus. Moses and Aaron would throw down their staffs. They would transform things into serpents, and they were able to create plagues, the ten plagues. You know, it's funny because it's all about this Jewish mysticism, all about this ancient Hebrew Kabbalism. It was magic. I don't care how Christian you are. And I don't care if you think that magic's evil. Moses and Jesus did magic. They did thaumaturgy. That's what it's called. Conjuring miracles. Magic. And people say magic is evil, but what do you call it if it's not magic? What do you call it when you are able to turn water into wine? What do you call it? Water is not wine. What is it when you turn base lead into gold? It's called alchemy. It's magic. So I guess being rigid is not going to work for most Christians, is it? It can't. Because magic is magic. Miracles are miracles. Portents are portents. And this is how it is. Even your Bible says it's there. And it's not demonic. It can be, depending on what you want to play with. But priesthood, priestcraft, and all the other stuff that goes with it is all part of the great and wonderful paranormal experience we have on this planet. And three days prior to the countdown of the clock on that website, there was a causal engine. Three days prior to the countdown of that clock, there was an anomaly that happened in China. China's Yangtze River, the third largest in the world, turned red. The entire water was blood red. Looking at the city and the water, you can go to my website at groundzeromedia.org and click on blood count. Watch the fishermen as they're knee deep in red blood water. Still investigating it. Still wondering what's going on. Now I know that you probably think that this connection to the countdown clock this event is a far reach, however, it was also reported. This anomalous blood-red water was seen in France as well. The Daily Telegraph on September 9th was reporting that in southern France, the water there had high salt content, and as the saline increased, the lakes in the area turned an eerie blood-red. And now they are smelling sulfur in parts of Oregon, and all up and down the West Coast are smelling sulfur now. What does that mean? I don't know. We had a caller 
who wanted to talk about the Colburn Bible. In the Colburn Bible, it says, When blood drops upon the earth, the destroyer will appear, and mountains will open up and belch forth fire and ashes. Trees will be destroyed and all living things engulfed. Waters will be swallowed up by the land and seas will boil. The heavens will burn brightly and redly. There will be a copper hue over the face of the land. Followed by a day of darkness, a new moon will appear and break up the fall. We just had our great full moon a while ago, just a few days ago. And the Colburn Bible says the people will scatter in madness. They will hear the trumpet. What sound effects were we hearing the other night? Was it a trumpet? Was it some strange sound in Seattle? They said the fish were mating. There will be the trumpet. The battle cry of the destroyer will seek refuge within the dens in the earth. Terror will eat away their hearts and their courage will flow from them like water from the broken pitcher. They'll be eaten in the flames of wrath and consumed by the breath of the destroyer. So if we believe the Colburn Bible, the destroyer has many names, Wormwood, Nibiru, Nemesis, the Fiery Dragon, Abaddon, Apollyon. Which, by the way, Abaddon and Apollyon are found, conveniently enough, in the book of Revelation, chapter 9, verse 11, 9 11. That date's approaching. In fact, it'll be here not too far. We're almost, we got an hour, a little less than an hour before 9 11 happens again. Who knows what that date is going to mean for us in the 11-year anniversary, the 11-year cycle of the attacks on New York and the Pentagon. It's amazing how magic works. It's amazing how scriptures are, amazing how Bibles are, amazing how all these things kind of fit together, and amazing how it's all going down. Tomorrow, if something remarkable happens, I'll be a prophet. If it doesn't, I'll be just another guy who's just talking about the strangeness of the apocalypse, which I consider myself to be. But I only have so much I can go on. Bloody rivers and streams, well, that's all part of the business. Dreams, however, feelings and thoughts are what I need from you. Do you feel that this is what is happening? All the things I've talked about tonight, do you feel that this is significant? Is it meaningful to you in some way? Or is it just an anomaly that you can just throw off and say, ah, it happens all the time, I'm not too worried. But here we are in the year 2012. A year of mystery. A year where we're told we may see an end to one way of life and the beginning of another. Change is inevitable. And things are weird. 888-673-3700, 888-673-3700, 888-673-3700, that's 888-673-3700. Go to your calls now. We're going to go to Michael in L.A. Hi, Michael. You're on Ground Zero. Hello? Hey, you're on the air. Oh, thank you. Um, you you've been talking a lot about uh, spiritual things tonight. And I'll tell you, there's, some, there's a way this country got here. And in recent history, and we don't talk about this, but... You're going to hear it for the, probably for the first time here. Uh, in 1962, we threw God out of school. And that violated the first commandment. I am the Lord thy God, thou shalt not have strange gods before me, and I am a jealous God. That's an Old Testament God. Jesus was not a jealous God. Uh, the Ten Commandments are still valid. They're not they were not thrown out of the Bible. I don't see how a jealous God would be ticked off being thrown out of school. I don't think he was thrown out of school. I think it's just uh, inappropriate ten, to be praying ten in commandments school. Ten still stand, sir. Ten commandments still stand where? That is correct. In Scripture. Where do they stand? Catholic, where do they and stand? They not changed one iota. Nobody, says it was stri- Nobody said that, but you know what? You don't need to always pray in school. 
Go to your closet in secret, well, God hey, said. I'm but you know what? We get, we're going to select about now? the fact that it was thrown out. We, I'm not talking about your position. I'm talking about the fact that it was thrown out. My position. Now, if you like that it was thrown out, that's your business. I'm talking I don't care it if out. it was thrown out or not. Okay, well, I do, and I have something to say about it. And that's why I'm trying to speak here. Now, when we did that, we bit off a real problem because Christ said, let the children come on to me. Yep. And if, you, if anyone interferes in that, it's better for them to have a millstone tied around their neck to be cast into the sea. So if the, government, pre- if the government prevents children, sin. if the government prevents children to come unto Christ, but parents will allow it, parents should be the ones to teach Jesus and Christ uh, in the home. The, the, no, the state... No. Has no authority over religion. The state has no authority to teach God. The power. They have usurped power. They should not God out of teach God in schools. They usurped power. They usurp they power by him what? Out of school. They aren't teaching it in school because it's not the place to teach it. Catholic schools teach it every day. That's a so Catholic school. I'm talking about so government. It is the place to teach it. And it was the right place for nearly 200 years until we had this weird leftist Supreme Court who decided to go against God and throw him out of school. Now, that started the decline of this nation because we broke the first commandment and then we bit off this curse. And we're under it to this day. So you're thinking that if we brought God God back into the public school... Then God would be happy with us. We'd be there one be happy group of people. Changes in this nation if if he was brought back into the school. The children are not getting any kind of value education. Look at look at the mess we're in. But that's not the look government's the, responsibility. That's, that's the parents' state. responsibility. I beg your pardon. It's, it's the parents' re- responsibility. Look, I don't want the government. Do the right I do not want the to government children. to teach my children about God. I don't. Well, you don't. I don't. You could take them out of, of, of that school and go to a, an atheist school. Or no, something. that's not. No. Whatever. Please, it's, don't be stupid. Is, don't be stupid and call me an atheist because I don't want my kids to be taught by my government well, to about go God. They weren't taught that way. You couldn't go to a Christian school and do that. Why not? They, Send them to a Christian would, school. Send them to a Baptist school. Send them to a school that teaches Christ if that's what you want. But What's wrong said, with that? You don't want your children. I don't said, want my children taught in a secular school about they God. They do, well, all right, fine. Start a private school that Good. doesn't want to teach about God. Go, no, but start a private school that wants to teach about God. Public, I'm all for it. You're not listening to me. What? In this country, Look, you're not listening to me. you're a traitor. You're not listening to me. I'm listening to you. No, you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. You're not listening to me. And you should have been leveled then. You're not listening to me. You're breaking the Constitution. You're breaking with the history of the United States of America. Oh, America. really? I'm Teaching breaking the history of the school. No, 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 no. I'm not. Oh, yes, 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 yes. No, yes. I'm not. Separation of church and state. I beg your pardon. And freedom Separation from religion as well as freedom of. that the state had no authority over teaching Christian matters. In other not words, all cannot, children who attend school violate, are Christians. The state cannot violate the teaching of religion. The they state is not violating. The state is not violating the teaching of religion because there are there are private schools out there that are allowing for the teaching uh, of Christ the, in school. The people pay for the people pay for public schools. They have a right <clears throat> and a and a constitutional right to have God taught in the public schools, and it was that way for nearly two hundred years until some leftists and socialists got in there. And took that right away. What religion are you? Which is unconstitutional. What religion are you, and Michael? Valid and satanic. So, r- r- and Michael, what religion are you? What religion are you? Pardon me. What religion are you? I told you, I'm a Roman Catholic. Okay, so you're a Roman Catholic. Here's the deal. I'll tell you what. Why don't we have religion forced into the public school system, and let Mormon teachers teach Mormonism to kids? Well, that was already suggested that they have time out to have. Christian, uh, no, I'm talking God. about school teachers getting up and saying that Joseph Smith was a prophet of God who saw Jesus Christ in God and said that your religion you, was already, the mother of all harlot religions and that it's a demonic you, religion. I just got through telling you 
that it was already suggested and didn't work out well that you have the various religions come and teach the children that wanted to hear the word of God in the, the word of school. God as to who dictates the word of God. Well, the Roman Catholics. Would oh, the Roman Catholic, Catholic Church. The, the churches that look like spook so alleys. That's what we want, right? We want, the, we want the guts of Christ falling down on the altar. That's what we want kids to see, right? The guts of Christ. Yeah, the guts of Christ. I've been to basilicas in South America. I've seen the hideous crucifixes. I've seen it all. The dying man, this meaning is life South is forever. America. This is the United States oh, of America. Oh, the United States of America who decides to have States selective Catholicism and selective... Not, co uh, not subject to the laws of Vatican South America II and all the other Satanicist ideas that are out there in Catholicism as well, right? A bigger pardon? The, oh, the, 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 the Vatican II and all the state of vacanist ideas that are out there in Catholicism as well, right? The imperial cult, we should teach about it, right? P. Dewey and all that other nonsense, right? Come on, give me a break. You the think Roman it did? The Catholic Roman Catholic Church, Church is so wonderful? In a Come true, on. From true scripture. The true God from and true if you, scripture. And if you don't like it, that's too bad. That's not. But the point is oh, that God is to be taught in the schools. And this, the state has no right whatsoever, constitutional or otherwise, to remove that teaching. You know, and you're the reason why... This country is suffering... No, they, you're the reason why this country is suffering, morality. Michael, because you have a rigid mind, and you think that Roman Catholicism well, needs you, to be taught in the public school, and you are wrong. Yeah, Roman Catholicism, per se, wasn't taught in public schools. However, a Protestant form of Christianity was taught in the public schools, and weak as it was, it should have been left in there. And since they don't have any of now, they won't even let, as I say, Catholic priests come in and teach Catholics or Protestants come in and teach Protestants. Uh, they don't even allow that. Okay. Well, so Michael, uh, Michael, you, Michael. Church and state is not what you say. It okay. never was All right. the, the impression of what our forefathers Let's wanted. have the callers have at it, Michael. Um, um, well, thank you for the call. I can't believe he just came out of the woodwork. 888-673-3700. That's 888-673-3700. Weigh in on this. This is unbelievable. I can't believe. Can't believe. We'll be back. FM News 101 KXL. More with Clyde Lewis and Ground Zero on FM News 101. This is not a test. It is the future. Ground Zero with Clyde Lewis. Oxygen. I like oxygen. I wasted oxygen just a few seconds ago. I need voices and other people who want to add to the conversation that Michael had brought up, which I don't know why he somehow interprets that we threw God out of school, and that breaks one of the commandments. And wow, I just, I worry about people like him. I really do. Because I don't want to see my children be taught in a public school about God. I just don't want that. No, it's my responsibility to do this if I feel that my son or daughter needs to know about God. And I do it my own way, at my own time, and my own pace. We'll be back. Lewis and Ground Zero on FM News 101. Dead blood, they said. 
this blood is alive. And then I said, his blood is this. I said, it's the blood of your Messiah. Triple eight six seven three thirty seven hundred. Some people are frightened, aren't they? They're so frightened about the end of the world that they they have demands and want the world to be like their world, where they want the world to be just what they want it to be. I'm sure we all want it that way, but you know what? We have to understand that we live on a planet with different people, different viewpoints, different religious beliefs. It's the way it is. Ron in Salt Lake City, you're on Ground Zero. How you doing, Clyde? Good. Hey, um, I talked to you a while back about when the the meteor flew in Portland. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, well, I've been listening a long time since then. But I was uh, listening to that other guy going off, and I wanted to kind of throw a dig at him. But down here in Salt Lake City, over by um, what was the Olympus High School, yeah, they actually do teach uh, the Book of Mormon there. It's not connected in the school, but it's right across the street from the school, and the students actually go from the high school to the school. Uh, yeah, it's the, called seminary. It's called release time. They have they decide that they want to take out one elective class, and they have that's the time for themselves, and they can use it to either screw around or go to religious studies. Yeah, exactly. I thought that was. I mean, I, I agree with you, and I agree with the other guy. I don't think that they should necessarily be teaching religion in school, but they should make the children aware of it. I guess aware of it, they are aware of it. You're aware well, of it all the time, right? Well, some children aren't. I mean, they, I don't know. Where I live, I live in North Salt Lake. And you see a lot of kids that aren't aware of anything. Well, you know, you know maybe they, parents they, don't they, want their kids to believe in God. Well, yeah, maybe. I mean, it's to each their own. But I think at the same time, they should know something, right? My fiance, six-year-old, knows about Buddha. Is that wrong? Every no. time, Every time I swear, if I say, God damn this, or if I say, oh, my God, you know what he says to me? Don't say God. Say Buddha. He says right. that to me all the time. Now, what do I say to him? Oh, okay. I'll say, and I laugh, and I say, okay, I'll say Buddha from now on. I understand that one. Um, I want to thank you. Um, one, you know, half the time you scare the crap out of me. <laughs> the rest of the time you open my eyes. I appreciate that. I and, appreciate uh, that. I'll keep on listening even from down here. Do you guys have, are you guys on the radio down here? KNRS, I think. KNRS, KNRS? I think. KNRS? Yeah, KNRS. I'm on for about an hour. You got to demand I'm on for three. My God, I'm from Salt Lake City. They should at least give me three hours down there. I totally agree. I appreciate it, man. Well, hey, um, thank you for uh, doing what you do. Thank you. Take care. All right. Bye bye. Yeah, my my six my uh, fiance six year old says Buddha. Don't say God, say Buddha. And you know, for the longest time, he thought Jesus was Karate Man. We had a conversation about God when the Watchtower was sitting at a bus stop one day, and he saw Jesus in this picture. And, I, and he asked me who it was. I said, it's Jesus. And he said, oh, is he a karate instructor? <laughs> because he was wearing the robes. And I said, yeah, he's <laughs> something like that. I said, he helps, he helps people learn to take care of themselves. And um, for the longest time, we called him Karate Man. And it was funny for a while. And we had to teach him who he was. But we don't push Jesus on the kid. Come on. You know, put Jesus on the kid, but then he one day he wound up in a Buddhist temple, and he was treated well by the Buddhists, and he was very impressed with Buddhism. So I have a six-year-old uh, budding Buddhist in my home, and I love him to death. An amazing kid. Amazing kid. Let's go to Casey now. Casey, hi. You're on Ground Zero. Hey, how you doing there, Clyde? Good. Hey, I respect you uh, as a person and as a speaker on the radio and everything. You know, and uh, I would hope that you would also respect other people's viewpoints and, and feelings and thoughts. I do, but uh, when I ask them questions and they don't answer the questions and continue to monologue about something that's moronic, I don't want to. I don't. 
I don't go for that. That guy, that guy that came on my radio show, you know what he was doing? He was monologuing his viewpoints. If he wants to do that, he gets his own damn radio show. It's called The Internet. True. I understand. For the same token, not everybody's got that ability to do so. I mean, it takes money to do anything in this life, in this country. Yeah. You know? Well, but see, the truth is, is that when you're... So you and I, Casey, are having a discussion. It's what we have. We talk. It's like the idea that we're imaginary sitting at a table. I have a cup of coffee or a beer in front of me, and so do you. And we're talking. Now, if I was to sit down in front of you and go, Hey, Casey, you know God was taken out of the school, and that's why this country's falling apart, and it's because of Almighty God and the Catholic religion that I'm here to tell you tonight. And I just keep on going. You would say, you know what? Go drink your beer at the other end of the corner where you can be with yourself and talk to yourself. True. But see, here's something else. You know, I mean, I want to bring, I want to, I want to have you be aware of. We've, we've wanted to do this. We've wanted to have our kids, you know, have that ability to at least to know who this Jesus is, and to for us to do that, well, we have to send them to a private school. Yeah. To them, and then to send them to a private school, it's like double, if not triple, to send our kids. To Casey, what is the problem with you not teaching your children about God and Jesus and whatever else you want to teach them about? What is the problem? Because we can't. We don't. We have. We don't have the kind of time we're spent. You know, out there working sixty, eighty hours, a hundred hours a week, trying to cover all the bases of our, of our obligations and financial responsibilities to the government of paying Casey, back. Casey, do you have family yeah. prayer? Pardon? Do you have family prayer? True, but see, that's the thing of it is. What I want you to understand here, Clyde, is the thing is. Is this God that he was speaking of? He's supposed to be the center and focal point of our life. Always, yes. Yeah, yeah. that's right. If you're, if you're a Christian, I mean, God is the focal point of your life, and that means that, you know, when things happen, wrong or right, and things of that nature, God is probably talked about a lot at home. Clyde, I don't want you, I mean, I don't want to be rude. I, don't want, I mean, I don't want to dominate this conversation any more than, than you know, I feel that, that you should. But the same token, what I'm trying to get across to is the is the point of if God is supposed to be our focal point of our entire life from mm -hmm. the moment we wake up and get out of bed mm -hmm. until the day we go until the time we go to bed, if He's supposed to be our focal point of our life, mm -hmm. we need to have Him His knowledge of Him in our life constantly, not just you know part time or a couple hours here and there or half an hour here and there at the dinner table, mm -hmm. you know, uh, fifteen minutes, fifteen minutes of having. This knowledge is not going to do anything for our kids. And our kids are not brought up in the ways of knowing his righteousness. And his righteousness is knowing right from wrong, not just living a life of wrong. But that's not the government's responsibility to teach it to your kids. It's where the church and state separation comes in. They're not supposed to intervene in us and our, our teaching our kids the ways of him. No, that's they're, not. they're not. They're not. Right. But they're not responsible for teaching it either. It's so up to they, you. Well, that's where that's where they're wrong, and how they force upon the majority of the public to pay for pay taxes toward public school. They force people to pay taxes toward public school. I know, they, but they if they if, you, if they're forcing you to pay taxes for public schools, they're forcing you for everything. And the truth is, if 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 it should be taught in school, then everything in this world, everything in this country, would look. Do you want to live in the Middle East? No, that's not, that's not, that's not. No, no that's answer not. my question. Do you want to live in the Middle East? No, I don't want to live in the Middle East. Because okay, I don't, I don't. so in the Middle East, religion plays a full and, and intricate part of the government there. Every day you hear some screaming, singing, whatever from a tower that wakes you up every morning so that you will get on your mat and you will face Mecca and pray. Do you have a government requiring you every morning to wake up, get on your knees, and pray to Jesus? No, that's that's a voluntary thing. Okay, yeah. Would you like that to happen? Not that my government forced it down my throat. Okay, no. so why would you want the government forced down the throat of your child, God, Jesus, and whatever, in whatever way they see fit to teach it to your child? First of all, the government doesn't have that right. They should never have that right. Okay, so that's why do we why do we want it why do we want it in the public schools then? Why do we okay? Why do we want public schools? Yes. Because it's a choice. It's pretty much a choice. I can choose to go to this class. It's it's in our public school. I have a choice to go to this class in the public school to mm -hmm. learn who this person is to know about this person. Mm -hmm. If I don't want to go to that class, okay, I don't go to that class. But to totally have that class non-existent at all in the public school, 
that's totally against our constitutional right. Of, I in, who this in a lot of school districts, they have something called release time, where kids can go to a religious service if they wish to. And that is available. I don't know if it's available in Portland, but it is available in a lot of other places where I've seen where religious groups such as the Catholics, the Protestants, and the Mormons, they have uh, seminaries that they set up, or they set up uh, catechisms or something where children can go and learn, and they can take time out of their busy schedules to go do so. They're taught, though, directly on the grounds of churches or in rooms that are set aside or provided for pastors to come in and teach the Word of God. Now, that's something that I can go with, but... I do not believe that God, Jesus, or any other religious uh, thing should be part of the curriculum. Unless, of course, you're doing it in a sociological way, where you're learning of other religions and cultures, and you're, you're, you're basically learning that there are certain religions in the way they believe and how they believe. Okay, well, here's, a, here's, here's what the PTA thing is all about. Parents, teacher association. That's where, that's where the parents come into the schools, and they say, well, what are you teaching my kid? And the teachers come back and they tell the parents, well, this is what we're teaching a kid. And they show you, you know, the format. They hand you a, a pamphlet or, and or a book and say, this is, you know, we turned to, you know, this chapter of this book and mm -hmm. this we did yeah. yesterday. Mm -hmm. And you, you, you thumb through it with the teacher and the teacher shows, you know, shows all these things that they was taught. And you go, wow. So that my kid's learning this, you know, right from wrong. And he's going, yeah. It's like, do you see anything in there that, that's brainwashing to your kid? I'm like, no. You know, it's like, no wonder my kid comes home and says, hey, thanks, Dad, I appreciate what you did for me yesterday. Uh, thanks, Mom, I really do love you. Hey, sis, I'm sorry the other day I lied to you about something, and I apologize and ask that you forgive me. I didn't mean to say that. You I, know, the I, argument, I, Casey, is not that I don't believe that schools are, a, are, are basically a training ground for disgust and, and teaching children horrible things, because I know that what they are is they're turned loose in an environment where they're completely and utterly swayed by other students, peer pressure, and teachers themselves. The truth of the matter is, is that if you do have a concern for your child, you will ask your child what he's learning. And right from wrong should be taught by the parents, because that's what parents do. Teachers, you know, they're there to give a curriculum. You're there to give love. You're there to give right from wrong. You're there to give all those things. And to put that in the responsibility in the hands of the state makes it really, really, really bad. They're not teaching values. Values should be taught at home. Values should be taught in life full time, because if you well, that's up any... that's up to individuals. And you know what, Casey? If you teach values to other people and you're an example, I tip my hat to you. If you think it's other people's responsibility to teach your kids values, you need to start thinking about what you're teaching. So why do you, why do you think there's so much disrespect amongst the, amongst the society and people? You know that they that when they walk down the street, you know, and you pass a stranger and you nod a head, nod your head at them, and like, hey, how you doing? And they just look at you and stare at you and just pass you. It's called Where? rites of passage, and it's called intolerance, and it's called we don't. We, we there's a sense of entitlement being taught to kids these days. We need to have everything instantaneous and quick. Everything is based on expedience and a whim. We don't take time. We need to realize that things take time. We've had 200, over 200 years, Clyde, and we're still talking about it takes time. Same thing with you know, the last 50 years of all the people we've had in office. Do you know what? All of these, all of these elitists that are in power are, gra are gradualists. Like you say yourself, these guys that are running for president, they are not the savior of this nation, and they never will be because no. they're men. They're, men. they're not right. God. You're, You're right. No one to teach them that's above them. You know, that's why we need this Jesus, this God in our life, because he knows what the hell to do. Well, he then bring it into people's lives and, and, and bring it in uh, gradually and be a friend and be kind, and I think people will see your example and they'll know that Jesus is with you. I don't see a problem with that. That's, the re that's what the problem is. Well, wrote, Casey, uh, he, Casey, answer me a question. Is Jesus with you or not? He is with me all the time. Man. That's one, is that's God one with problem. you all the time, too? That's what drives me crazy about living in this country, because we're living in a secular, humanistic mindset. Well, secular. in your world, you can make your world whatever you want it to be. And if people, if, if people are so damn secular that they're not willing to listen to your testimony, then they're, they're joyless people. I mean, this is my world. My world is right here in America. I was born here. I wasn't born in Egypt. I wasn't born in Thailand. I was born in America. Okay. And America is raised on these, on these principles and these <clears> values. Well... Keep them going. Keep them alive. You do that, and, and I'll see it in you, too. Because of those principles and values that we were raised on, this country went great for, for what? I agree with you. 
I totally agree. I got to take a break. I agree with you. Casey, wonderful. Thank you for the call. Yeah. Bye. FM News 101 KXL. Get ready to clip it. Launch the Clip Radio app now. I'll bet you know somebody who needs a little extra assistance with daily living. Hey, it's Lars. You know, we're all going to hit that point at some time, but now might be the time for you to check out Russellville Park for you or for a loved one in your family. Russellville Park is a great retirement community. They've got regular services like housekeeping. They've got wonderful meals. I've eaten at their four different restaurant venues. They've got a staff that's always ready to assist and a calendar full of activities. And you know when they need it? Your loved one will get memory care or assisted living, but only as much as they need and they only pay for what they get. You should go by in person and check it out the way I have. 103rd and Southeast Burnside. I've been telling you about Russellville Park for years. Schedule a personal tour, then bring mom or dad in for lunch on me. Give them a call right now at 503-254-5900. That's 254-5900. The fact is, it's a wonderful way to maintain your independence and get all the help you need, or as little as you need, and only pay for what you need at Russellville Park. Russellville Park, more than a retirement, it's five-star fun. Does your furnace need replacing? Your house need cleaning? Or maybe you're ready to update your kitchen? Big or small, whatever your home improvement need, now it's easy to find the right home pro for your project. Log on to doit.servicemagic.com. Service Magic is a free online resource with instant access to pre-screened remodelers, maids, handymen, roofers, and many other home contractors. Just go to doit.servicemagic.com. Service Magic has a network of licensed and insured contractors in hundreds of home improvement categories. If you need a painter, electrician, plumber, or any other home service, visit doit.servicemagic.com. It's easy and it's free. It's the source to find neighbor recommended contractors in the Oregon area. Now you can hire a pre-screened home pro with confidence. Go to doit.servicemagic.com. It's quick, it's free, and there's no obligation. Go to doit.servicemagic.com. That's doit.servicemagic.com. Hey, hey, what's up? Buddy, welcome Good. to Home All Abode. Let's give him the grand tour. Great, thanks. This is the foyer, which doubles as the closet. Mm. So we call it the foyer. I see. And right there is the coffice. Coffice? Yeah, you know, it's kitchen, office. You see that in magazines. You do? At this rate, you might want to expand your home and have an office and a kitchen. Maybe with some new granite countertops. U.S. Bank can help with variable rates starting as low as 3.99% APR on a home equity line of credit. Screw Put some brakes on it. You just passed with the dining room. Breakfast in bed, or lunch, or dinner. Let us adjourn to the family laundry room, shall we? Apply today at any U.S. Bank branch, usbank.com backslash low rate, or call 800-209-BANK. All of us serving you, U.S. Bank. For details about credit costs and terms, call 800-209-BANK or see your U.S. Banker. Some restrictions may apply. Subject to credit approval. Home equity loans and lines are offered through U.S. Bank National Association, N.D., Equal Housing Lender, member FDIC. Oh, here is our garden. Oh, I get it garaged in. No, it's a garden where we grow veggies. Today's PDX 50 deal, Portland Baseball Club. Two one-hour batting cage rentals for $20, a $40 value for only $20. Go to PDX50.com. Deeply discounted deals to use at local businesses. PDX50.com. Clip it now for this great deal. More with Clyde Lewis on FM News 101. This is not a test. It is the future. Ground Zero with Clyde Lewis. Okay, let's see if we can burn through a few calls here. Gordon, hi, Portland. You're on Ground Zero. you got about uh, 30, 40 seconds. Go ahead. Yeah, Clyde, I just have one question for all these folks. Is What happened to church and Sunday school for teaching kids about God and religion? That's my question. It doesn't seem to be, they don't seem to hear me when I say that. They, I don't understand well, it either. Supposed to teach you, the, you know, it, school, public schools aren't about religion. It's about giving you an education. Right. Church is about teaching you about religion. Yeah. Church is where you go for your spiritual education. It's like, uh, why would you go to a plumber to teach you about being a doctor? It doesn't make sense. Right? You're right. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, Gordon. Have a great night. Let's go now to Geo. Geo, hi, you're on Ground Zero. Uh, yeah, Clyde. I uh, just uh, wanted to say I was born and raised. A, uh, oh, sorry, I was raised a Catholic. And uh, what I would probably advocate is for maybe an elective class uh, in the public school that would teach 
uh, the children all the religion and their practices so that they can have their own free thinking and, and know what they're about instead of being told what they are. That's sociology, and I took it, and that's why I have an abundance of interest in many religions and theology and belief systems. Exactly. I mean, I, I think it would be more tolerant, uh, the, the children would be more tolerant of the other religions once they know what they're all about instead of what's being, what's, what's being told to them. By I have no problem family. with that whatsoever, Gio. I have no problem with the idea of children attending a class where they learn about different religious belief systems and how they believe and make sure that they are approved by the religions themselves so we don't have people throwing in nonsense that isn't true about religious beliefs because therefore we could become hateful about Muslims or Jews or exactly. Mormons or any other group that's not understood, or even, even uh, Scientologists. Exactly. Bright, ble bright blessings there, uh, Clyde. Gio, have a great night. Bye now. Take care, bye. Let's go now to Sherry quickly from Vancouver. I say if the end of times is coming, this argument is irrelevant. <laughs> but I think that going to Mount Adams is has no sulfur smell about the man who called from Texas and said there was no sulfur smell on Mount Adams, but every other mountain he climbed did have a sulfur smell. I've been to Mount Adams. I can see why it doesn't have a sulfur smell. And so, well, my feeling about Mount Adams, it's a safe area from the 33rd parallel. Yeah. There's a way from the 33rd parallel to Mount Adams. It's on a ley line. It's beautiful up there. And I, if you go to the East Seti Ranch, you meet up with James, and he'll show you all the beautiful lights in the sky that fly around that mountain. I, be I believe that. I've seen that. And I and there's even more. Mm -hmm. But it does. It is based on love. But it's not. It's it's, it's different. It's a religious but experience. Think. It's a religious experience, Sherry. It really it's is. A, a true. It is. A true happening. <laughs> no, if you want to, Sherry, if you want to, you ought to pick up that video from uh, prepareyourgroundzero.com. It's called Contact Has Begun. It's about Matt oh. Adams. And you can pick it up. It's Just pick it up online. It's at uh, prepareyourgroundzero.com. It's called Contact Has Begun. Purchase that video. I think you'll really like it. Well, I know I would, <laughs> but... I've been in a vortex once mm. in 1988. Mm. Well, I know vortexes. They that, when I last time I was up at Mount Adams, I felt electric worms crawling through my body. It was an interesting feeling of electricity and beauty. Sherry, I gotta run. Gotta run out of time. Have a great night, okay? Okay, you too. Bye bye. Bye bye. Good night from Ground Zero. We're gonna revisit the Divic Box tomorrow, so be here. It's gonna be amazing. Good night. FM News 101 KXL.